Thanks for listening to The Adam Carolla Show on Podcast One. Rocket Mortgage. When you're looking for a new home, you want to make sure it meets your needs. Can you work in the office? Can you cook together in that new kitchen? You have to know the house fits. Rocket Mortgage. Make sure your financing works for you, too. It doesn't have to be a hassle. Rocket Mortgage gives you tools to understand all your options and buy with certainty. Check out how different down payments impact your monthly budget or see your loan options, closing costs, tax estimates, and adjust payments and closing costs online in real time. Industry-leading technology, 24-7 access to your loan info, tools and expertise to help your offer compete in a crowded market. Visit rocketmortgage.com slash Adam, because when you need a mortgage that fits your life, Rocket can. Right, Dawson? Call for cost information and conditions. Equal housing lender. Licensed in all 50 states. NMLSconsumeraccess.org, number 3030. Well, this show is brought to you by Hyundai Tucson. Every inch of the new Tucson's been completely reimagined, resulting in an SUV loaded with innovation inside and out. You can learn more at Hyundai.com. Um... We had uh, quite an interesting episode. Zuby, you know Zuby, has been on the show before, quite outspoken guy, a little bit of a provocateur. He um, he put a really fascinating uh, Twitter chain out and uh, kind of got into the nuts and the bolts of the pandemic and how it affected us as a society, and it had a lot of really interesting insights, and I was going to get into that, but we got Zuby on the phone from uh, jolly old London town, so... It's really interesting, and uh, it's the kind of thing you'd want to listen to and probably share. That's coming up. First, I'll tell you about uh, Geico. Do you own, do you rent your home? Well, you do one or the other, and then there's your automotive policy. Well, take your automotive policy and bundle it. That's right. Take your automotive policy and get it with, bundle it with your homeowners, your renter's insurance. It's easy to do, and uh, you got so much to do already. So why don't you make it easy on yourself? Go to Geico.com, get a quote. Just see uh, see just how much you could save when you bundle at Geico. That is Geico.com. From Corolla One Studios in Glendale, California, this is the Adam Corolla Show. Adam's guest today, Peter North. With Gina Grad on news and Bald Brian on sound effects. And now, his porn name was Peter North Hollywood. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get it on. Our church is going to mandate get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. We love that about you, right, Gina Grad? That's right. And Bald Brian. You wanted the best. You got it. The best. Hot get hype, of, everyone. Hottest band in the land. Kiss. All right. Um, I got a thread by our friend uh, Zuby that uh, Dawson will read for you that I thought was quite fascinating that I stumbled into last night on Twitter when I was uh, making fun of the Montreal Canadiens. The Canadiens. Getting their Canadiens mm-hmm. for getting their ass kicked by a bunch of Floridians <laughs> in the uh, COVID Cup. Healthy as I like Floridians. To call it. Yeah. Good. Suck it, Canada. You got Trudeau. Lock it down, bitches. We just beat your ass. And I know you guys love can't. You love hockey. hockey we don't a give a fuck about <laughs> hockey. Right. Can- Floridians don't even care about hockey. Couldn't and we still less. beat the sport yeah. you live and die with. Maybe it's the fact that uh, you did not play to full arenas. Mm. You do not get the home ice advantage if you do not play to a full arena. Tampa was goddamn full and uh, then some. So uh, good luck, uh, Canadians, and uh, thank you, Tampa, for um, – I, I can't think of a more open environment than Florida, and I can't think of a more closed environment than Canada. So uh, the righteous won this battle, pussies. So uh, think about it next time there's an election. You showed them. Yes, I did. 3,500 fans in uh, Montreal, but probably eighteen or 19,000 in uh, Tampa Bay. So good. 
you fucking guys lost. Now wake up, open up, and see if you can get some people in the stands. You know, By the way, they the thing, probably I, agree with you. I'm sure they. I'm sure hockey fans do. Like and the hockey players. Oh, the players, and not only that, but whenever they put the camera outside, the streets were packed mm-hmm. with Canadian fans. Like there were literally shoulder to shoulder, like sardines. It goes against the spirit of the uh, of uh, the idea of the, the rule, lockdown, you know, whatever. Well, it's one of those. In the face of the right. You go. Uh, nobody can come into the. Uh, nobody. Nobody can come into the arena, and they go. All right, and then they all just gather outside the arena, and then there's more humanity right. per square inch right. than there is inside the yeah, arena. There's no spacing. And by the way, inside the arena, you could do temperature checks yeah. or do whatever whatever mitigation mm-hmm. things you want to do. But uh, nope. Yep, eighteen thousand one hundred and ten in uh, the Tampa. Lightning Stadium. Yeah. I call it a stadium, but I guess rink or arena. Uh, and I guess Montreal was denied at a plea from 10,000 fans by the Quebec uh, Public Health Authorities. But no, <laughs> lock it down, pussies. <laughs> We're going to celebrate. Yeah, somebody sent me a tweet that said uh, the uh, Montreal's going back to lock it down and the Lightning players are going to do coke off a hooker's ass and party all night. <laughs> That's Actually, America, yeah. number one, bitches. Mm-hmm. Dawson's uh, Dawson, I should say, you have uh, thoughts on the game, I see? Well, I was watching the postgame uh, right before they awarded the Stanley Cup, and I heard a music bed playing throughout the stadium. Mm. And I was like, I know this. Kaylin, we got caught the tail end of it on YouTube. Kaylin will play the video. Mm-hmm. An incredible team effort. So oh, that's just the end of it. Does it ring a bell? Do you uh, know what that's very from? Very cinematic. I feel like it's from Indiana Jones or something. Fanfare. Would oh, it no, surprise you that it's work. from this? Oh, it's from, from Corolla One Studios in Glendale. They California. had to know. Right. They had to know. They're stealing everything from us. You're welcome, NHL. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, major love to our sponsor who gives us all that music, extreme music, extreme music.com. Um, yeah, and, and finally great. took a decade, but, uh, <laughs> national hockey league finally Good. caught on. Yeah. Good. Hey, question about this, because Ooh. it's not just about winning. It's about, you know, if the Canadians won that Stanley cup itself would be on lockdown. These guys spitting in it, drinking out of it, sharing the cup. Oh, that's right. Think about that. And also when you're designing a cup, what I'm trying to think of what it is for MLB. They have the it's what the, it's, it's it's a dangerous weapon. It's the guy yes. with the flags. Oh right, can't right, drink right, from yeah. it. If you hand hand it off to someone, they have to get a tetanus shot. It's first. like a trident. You're, you're gonna skewer yeah. yeah, make make it a big fat cup and yeah. uh, have everyone be able to uh, partake yeah. from the cup till it's uh, till it runneth over. All right, uh, something that somebody. I think tweeted me a few days back it was an article on my old friend uh, Eric Kramer. Quarterback. Eric Kramer, quarterback, played Pop Warner football with him. His dad was pretty instrumental in me coming back from the farm, from the Trobabes to the Gremlins. Told me he was tickled pink when I came back. Sort of wanted to know, uh, he wanted to know, um, why I was coming back because I, <laughs> I rode the pine when I was seven for the yeah. entire season. Never a good question. And I gave him my um, officer and a gentleman, Richard Gear thing. I got no place else to go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you think I'm going to sit in that sweat box with my mom yelling, freak <laughs> out, watching a 13 inch zenith? I don't think so. I would much rather ride the pine. Yeah. Another year with the East Valley Trojans and go back to the uh, Cool Hand Luke sweat box over there with the depressed people. So that's necessity is what brought me back. Yeah, if I had some video games and some parents who wanted to go skiing or something, I would have never Never seen air conditioning. Never, never gone back. I would have just blamed the coaches and and called it a life. But uh, I came back. So Eric Kramer is on the team. His dad was uh, our coach. And I think I was always thought it was interesting about Kramer, who had maybe a 13-year NFL career with the Lions, with um, the Vikings, with the Bears. Wow! Uh, you know, he he NFC North guy. He played around the league, and then he started, and he had played lots of games, and he was in the league for a long time. But he did not start. He was not better than Scott Whitman was when I was uh, at the East Valley Trojans. He was a he was a backup mm-hmm. quarterback. 
uh, at the Pop Warner level. And then as I was reading this article, now, later on, his son OD'd on heroin, I believe. And it was like a sad story because the kids like panicked and instead of calling 911, they thought they were getting in trouble. Yeah. So they just like let him go to bed, We've you know, heard those and uh, before. yeah. So then his son died and then uh, Eric uh, fell into depression and then uh, attempted suicide and really attempted suicide. Wow. And uh, this is sort of the story of uh, his redemption, I believe. Dawson? Former Bears quarterback Eric Kramer checked into the Good Night Inn in Calabasas, California on August 18th, 2015. He brought the Sig Sawyer 9mm handgun he had purchased specifically for the occasion. Kramer had spent weeks planning his death. He got his finances in order so his son Dylan would be comfortable. He, never had, pr he had never fired a handgun before, so he took it to the practice range. During a five-year span, Kramer divorced, struggled to connect with Dylan, who decided to live with his mom, and split with his girlfriend, and then death took those closest to him one by one. In 2011, Kramer's son Griffin, an 18-year-old quarterback at Thousand Oaks High School, died of a heroin over overdose. He had injected the drug, foamed at the mouth, and passed out. His friends didn't take him for medical care. Instead, they put him in a bedroom where he was found dead the next day. In 2012, Kramer's mother, Eileen, died of uterine cancer. By the way, if my friends were around me when I was ODing on heroin when I was 18, they would have still found me in the bedroom, but with a giant dick yeah. drawn with a Sharpie right. on my forehead. The two had grown close only a short time before. Kramer mourned not only her death, but never knowing where the relationship was headed. His father, Carl, with whom he wasn't particularly close, had been diagnosed with a sieve esophageal cancer that would later kill him it surprised kramer how much it affected him so that must have been mr kramer yeah. i mean no one knew anyone's first name back then his name was mr yeah yeah no Sir. one knew the first name of the kids on the team by the way they're just corolla you know um osterman like it was everyone's just everyone it was all last names 100 percent. Right. sorry people aren't coming he thought they're going he figured he'd go too he put the gun under his chin and fired. Some part of Kramer didn't want to die that night. He knew what depression felt like, having taken his first antidepressants during his five-year stint quarterbacking the Bears, but this was different. When Griffin died, I'd never, I'd never been that sad in my life, Kramer said. It had the feeling of, when it's here, it doesn't go away, even for a second. Kramer's first though with suicidal, suicidal thought came in 1994, his first season with the Bears. He wasn't used to the weight of a franchise's expectations. Kramer wasn't a starter in high school. He eventually got the nod in junior college before transferring to North Carolina State. That's a crazy... He didn't really start in Pop Warner when I was with him, and That's then crazy. he didn't start in high school. Yeah, usually, like the guy in the NFL, the <clears throat> lineman, he was the quarterback or right. whatever in Pop the big Warner. Fish. He, was, he was just the biggest, best player, so yeah. give him the ball every time. It's, it's weird that you don't start in Pop Warner and you don't start in high school, and somehow you just keep going at that mm -hmm. position. He was undrafted out of college and left the NFL for the Canadian Football League. I was a nobody from nowhere, he said. After he hurt his knee, Kramer said, only one team returned his phone calls, the Lions. Kramer thrived there. His playoff victory against the Cowboys after the 1991 season remains the Lions' last postseason victory. He was part of the Lions' last division title team in 1993 and became a free agent during the offseason. The Bears signed him to a three-year, $8.1 million deal in 1994. Chicago tabbed me to be their guy, he said. That hadn't happened in my life, ever. Kramer suffered a separated right shoulder in the Bears' third game of 1994 and started only three more times all season. That's what sent me into my first depression, he said. Getting paid like a starter, but not being one. I remember thinking that people must be looking at me funny. Every morning, Kramer debated whether he, would make, whether he wanted to make the turn into Hollis Hall. What's Hollis Hall? Hallis? Hallis Hall? Yeah, George, George Hallis. Hallis. Okay. When he did, oh, that must be where they practice or... Yeah. Okay. When he did, he wondered whether he would get out of the car. It was a dark, heavy, black internal cloud, he said. Nothing felt good. Breathing didn't feel good. Being awake didn't feel good. 
Making eye contact was out of the question. Kramer sought help. He spoke to a psychologist and began taking antidepressants. The next season, he threw for 3,838 yards, which remains the most prolific passing season in Bears history. Wow. That's crazy. You're right. <clears throat> I know you think, I don't know, guys like McMahon, there's other guys in there. Harbaugh, maybe. Even, uh, what's his face? Don't care. Cutler. <laughs> Cutler, right. His depression returned often, but it never again came because of football. Kramer doesn't know whether taking blows to the head during a 13-year pro career contributed to his mental state, and admitted it's certainly not outside the realm of possibility. Some of his closest family members think it did. After Griffin died, Kramer again sought help. He connected with another former Lions quarterback, Eric Hipple. Like Kramer, Hipple had lost a teenage son. Like Kramer, Hipple had tried to kill himself, throwing himself out of a van traveling at 70 miles per hour, only to live. In Michigan, Hipple ran a center to help former athletes and service members battling depression. He invited Kramer out in June 2015. I remember. You remember Hipple? No, the name sounds familiar, but I can't say I know anything about He's him. like, you would know him because every Thanksgiving, the Lions right, would right. play somebody and um, the Hipple would be the quarterback from, you know, 1986 to 99 or something like that. Sorry. It was the right place for me, but I got there too late, he said. Kramer stayed for 30 days and still doesn't remember how he got home. When he did, the gun was waiting for him at the store. He had passed a background check. Kramer left suicide notes for his loved ones, but in the minutes before he pulled the trigger, he began sending text messages. One was to his sister. Another was to Chris German, a high school friend who eventually would retire from the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department after 34 years. German was in New Orleans, getting ready to check his son into the first year of college. At dinner, his phone pinged. He didn't look at the message until 10 minutes later. It was a text from Kramer asking German to help look after his son. Kramer also told him what he was about to do, and in which hotel he was staying. When someone does that, they're screaming, German said. They're trying to talk themselves out of it. German ran to his hotel room and began dialing, and from his cell phone, his son's phone, and the landline. He tried Kramer's cell phone, but he didn't answer. He called his old sheriff's station and learned a friend was on patrol that night. He tried the lobby at the hotel, a spot he knew from his old neighborhood patrols. He called the paramedics. When the officers and paramedics arrived at the Goodnight Inn, German was patched through to Kramer's hotel room. Which he, had, which he had checked into under his own name. The phone rang. German figured he was too late. I'll be damned if he didn't answer, German said. He was moaning. Kramer had shot himself. The bullet traveled from under his chin through his tongue and sinus cavity and out the top of his head. But Kramer was alive. I told him he needed to drop whatever is in his hand, German said. The gun hit the floor. He told Kramer to walk to the door, which he... Wait, so he did answer the phone. Oh, was yes. Able? Did they go through his frontal lobe? No. And he could walk to the door? Went out his head. He told Kramer to walk to the door, which he had propped open with bloody towels to greet the officer. He did. With a hole in his head, Kramer walked outside, down a flight of stairs, and into a waiting ambulance. Wow. Kramer was put in a medically induced coma for six weeks, and spent about nine months receiving medical care. He remembers none of it. It wasn't until three years later that he found out he had sent the text messages that a small part of him was fighting to live. There's a period of my life that goes back before I shot myself, and then a good year afterward where I don't have a lot of recollections and stuff, he said. What I know of my own life was told to me, and that includes the part about the theft. I don't know. I guess we have to read on. Okay. All right. So it it's a long article, but is, he, long is he doing okay now? <sighs> While Kramer recovered from his brain injury, his trust fund paid his bills and afforded him spending money once a month. He wasn't to spend wildly either before or after his injury. He wasn't one to spend wildly. In the middle of 2016, less than a year after his suicide attempt, 
Kramer said his checking account would become overdrawn. His credit card was being used to give cash advances. I'm trying to find out I think he'd be on where he's at. Uh, I saw on Wikipedia it's not on the simple line that said in 2020 he regained his, his faculties. I don't know if it's 100%. Uh, I just I know what I Jesus. saw. Yeah, the rest of the article's on the Chicago Sun-Times, so somebody sent it to me, and I just thought it was pretty fascinating stuff. It's also, uh, what a weird journey life is, you know? We should cocktail. reach out to him, have him on the show, and tell his story. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. I'd always obviously kept track of him because I played Pop Warner football with him and he was playing quarterback in the NFL. So, yeah. you know, I thought that was kind of cool. When when Dawson started talking about the gunshot, I immediately thought of Fargo, you know, with Steve Buscemi kind of shooting oh. his jaw. And I thought, oh, that I can't imagine that happening in real life. This is a thousand times worse than that. Here's the last line of the article. I went from life being so dark that I thought the best option was to not be here, Kramer said. Now... I'm the most grateful guy walking the planet. Oh, we got to talk to him. Yeah, probably. I don't know if he's out. I mean, obviously, I met him. He was in the San Fernando Valley, but um, mm -hmm. he must have grown up in the North Hollywood area or somewhere in there because, you know, there were Pop Warner teams. You'd be the Burbank Vikings right. or the Sun Valley Falcons or the Chatsworth Chiefs. So if you lived anywhere in Chatsworth, you right. played with the Chiefs. You didn't go with the... With the uh, East Valley Trojans, but um, so he must have been right, you know, right in the neighborhood. Probably went to a high school out here. Um, Sounds like he might have. Now he might be in Chicago or somewhere around. Chicago, I don't know, right? but it'd be good a good guy to try to uh, run down yeah. and see see how he could do with a with an inter interview because that would be a very inspirational interview. And, uh, you know, some, oftentimes you hear about people attempting suicide, but it's, it seems a little more cry for help yeah. than, you know, I took half a bottle of aspirin and then I called everyone I knew right. sort of thing. Eh, squeezing the trigger with a gun under your chin. Not a wiggle room. Yeah, that, that's well, more than a cry for but, help. But this is interesting. It, it sounds like it was both. It was he let people know where he was. He was saying goodbye and he did it. Like, yeah, unbelievable. Well, anyway, uh, we wish him well, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to uh, have a conversation yeah. with him about that. I hope he remembers me. <laughs> Probably doesn't. He can blame it on the injury. Um, all right. Uh, I got uh, Zuby, who I'm uh, excited about. I guess he's in England, probably, yeah. right? Yeah. Musician from England, but kind of a provocateur. Since. Yeah, he's been on. He was on in 2019. He zoomed he, in. He, he got. He was famous because he did the women's deadlift record, and he identified as a woman, and everyone got really mad. <laughs> he identified as a woman, and then he broke the women's deadlift yeah. record, and then he went back to being a dude. <laughs> Good turnabout is fair play. Everybody. Yeah, funny. Uh, he had a long thread that I thought was really interesting on uh, Twitter that I was looking at last night. So I thought uh, he can he can tweet explain it when we can get into it with him. Uh, also, good news. I got a Love Boat clip. Oh, it's been so long. Oh, man. Recently on Earth from 1981. Oh, boy. <laughs> Broken the silence. Shit. Yeah. Yeah, now, normally I just show you the dock and go for sexually harassing passenger or yeah, crew members. It's a fan favorite. Yeah. yeah. This is more exposition. It's more the story. It's more how crazy and kooky stories were in the 70s and early 80s on primetime shows. And you guys are used to all your great Netflix shows oh, yeah. now. Are we ever? And how good everything is. And even Kids going, your Hulus <laughs> going back to your Sopranos and that of kind course. of stuff. It's like, so good. Oh, you know what I mean? Now, they didn't need to do that. Um, Where are you going to go? I right. I recorded it for my TV, so uh, we'll have to turn the volume up a little. But um, they're getting onto the boat. <laughs> they're getting onto the boat. And now here's the story. Uh, the two guys, one guy is working as a cab driver, but he's really a teacher. He just doesn't get paid enough as a teacher as to moonlight as a cab driver. Okay. But he can God, afford a cruise. I yeah, think God, times have changed. <laughs> well, that guy's the cab driver who's dropping him off. Uh, okay. The, uh, there, uh, there was a lot of, you know, there's a whole, you know, back to my, my thought about what the future might be. Mm -hmm. There's a, a whole role that like cab drivers and bellmen and mm, elevator like operators yeah, and right. stuff played. Like every episode of the Love Boat started with some 
a, a chauffeur a or cab driver. Yeah. Or he had all the bags, yeah. and he'd be like, "Oh, just put them there. Just this. Uh, oh no, bring them to my cab." The guy's cab is out front. Like he could walk onto the boat. Like there's, you get padded down and wanded. You have to walk through an X-ray machine. Oh. They got to. You You're gotta, fumbling with all your own bags. You got to laminate. They got to swipe it. Yep. You know, they got to well, check it. It's not physical, glamorous. Just the physical distance to get onto the boat. You got to go off like <laughs> several. There's streets. terminals. Right now, no security, no, no nothing. You just right. walk onto the boat with your with your bags if you're driving all a right. cab. And so the one guy, he's a friend of his, and he's a teacher. So he drops the uh, he's dropping the bags off, but he's driving driving a hack. Okay. The other guy is taking the cruise. He is a teacher uh, as well. I don't know where he got the money for the... Oh, he doesn't need money for the cruise because he's been hired as the entertainment on the cruise. Doing math problems? He's a dancer. What are you talking about? Well, we haven't got to the good part yet, so... There's all exposition here. (laughs) I'll just just play the part where they get dropped off. Exact one. Mm Mm-hmm. It's not going to help your teaching career when the head of the local PTA is also on the cruise and she finds out you're a male stripper. That is a... uh... What a twist. We finally right. found a Love Boat episode I'd like to see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, the stakes have been raised. <laughs> yes. The Do cruise... they show him entertaining? Please oh, yeah, me. but it's that it's that sort of PG, you know, not a real, right. you know, doesn't got the dick in the, the hammock thing and he's smacking a chick in the <laughs> face with it. Yeah. yeah. No, uh, not so much of that. Either. Just stupid band stuff and sure. him and, like, basically ends up in sort of sequence Speedo or yeah. something, you know. To, but but does he hide himself? Like, uh, does he have like a Zorro mask? No, but she's not there. Oh, good. She's now. By the way, uh, I told Gary. Uh, okay, first things first. Head of the PTA. Uh, every school district has its own PTA. Every school. Every yeah. every school has a PTA. Yeah. So I I don't. Los Angeles is a pretty pretty big place. We go back to Pop Warner football. You're going to play for the Burbank right. Vikings. You're going to play for the Chatsworth Chiefs. So presumably that person would have to be at your high school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or junior high for you to recognize them. Right. Sure. Of course. Then Be also the, the PTA is normally a parent. Yeah, it's not like the superintendent of schools. This it's is just a, a parent. Single, single blonde 26-year-old chick. Doesn't, doesn't add up. And uh she doesn't look like any of the ladies uh that I remember from junior <laughs> junior high. But lo- love is found. I thought uh for fun I just found uh the head of the teachers union uh, Roberta Weintraub. I think. Is it Roberta Weintraub? Oh, no, no. I want to write her name down. Sorry. Randy. Randy Weingarten. Roberta Weintraub is from L.A. a million years ago. I just got my... Oh, Max Pat doesn't have the uh, pictures. Or oh, he's running. Please tell me oh. she had a long denim skirt and a Patrick vest. I don't know. I was talking to Max Pat an hour ago, and I was like, get those two pictures from Gary. And he's like, pictures? And I'm like, yeah, he's got two pictures of the... Oh, so I thought he had those. All right. We need some uh, thing where you... Figure shit out, Max Banner. All right, well, we'll get those uh, those two. Yeah? What happened? Did Gary not give them to you? No, that was me. I forgot to ask him. <laughs> Write stuff down. I, I Okay. Okay. There's also a Pina Colada song about possibility here where if she finds out he's a male stripper, she's got to be at the show. What are, you do, what are you doing here? Yeah, you both have no, each other's secrets. I'm working. You're, what are you doing? Well, the thing about the show, because uh, Julie McCoy, the cruise director, booked him, she just booked what she thought was a dancer. Sure. She didn't oh, sure. know he was an exotic <laughs> dancer. <laughs> so everyone like who was at the teacher. show, it wasn't a pina colada situation song because they thought they were there to see ah, interpretive dance or yes. something, and they were all shocked when they when saw him the pull, pull his off, yeah. pants off. Ah. Yeah, the head of the PTA appears to be going on this cruise solo. Mm-hmm. So in 1972, she's an unwed single mother. Well, uh-huh. 79, 79, 80, 79 okay. yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. And uh, and love is found. 
<laughs> but, but he can't let her know what he no. does, right. or she's the head of the PTA. She'll throw him out of the school district right. if she finds out. Does the head of the PTA have she's, kind of power? She has no authority. Yeah, I, say. I don't know. How, my, how she's aged. Yeah, she fundraises. We got uh, the TV version of the uh, head of the PTA, and then we have the real-life version of the head of the teachers' union, Randy Weingarten. So... Uh, I just thought you could compare and contrast what TV does with uh, these folks That's versus, the same person right versus now? reality. I, I can't believe uh, I'm saying this, but if we took 28 minutes and watched the whole episode, I'd be thrilled. Well, try 52 minutes, but yes. What? This is an hour long episode. How do they fill an hour? What? You didn't know the Lobo was an hour? Wait, 22 tops. <laughs> no, because. An hour. <laughs> it's just Gina. That's your real name. Yeah. The next story is Flip Wilson getting on the boat and Isaac going, my man. And then he's telling you how he got divorced and then Isaac's going to set him up with some ladies. They really pack in a lot of storylines. Oh, yeah. And then at some point, there's a jewel thief who comes right. on who falls in love with a woman. He, she can't know he's a jewel thief. Turns out she's a jewel thief. Oh. You know how that shit happens? And to catch a jewel thief, yeah. he must become... A, a rapist. rapist. <laughs> Gina, can I talk to you off the side here? Yeah, yeah. Um, don't tell Adam, but I didn't know it was an hour either. Oh! Uh, don't, but I, How I could this possibly be an hour? Brady Bunch, Bunch was long at a half hour. Everything was an hour. All all that, that format, Love Boat, Fantasy Island, Dallas. Dallas. Yeah, the all Dallas those, I get. Yeah, Dallas. Like Dallas. 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 Well, that's, that's, why, like so that's why they would have three separate stories going on on it uh, okay. once but uh anyway um she's ahead of the pta and if she finds out he's a stripper he's in trouble and i like that his cabbie buddy just sets the table for yeah. us right there that was really nice of him mm -hmm. all um, right can you believe we have to do this <laughs> but it's kind of nice teachers weren't getting paid back then yeah. now i don't know what come a long way i don't know what she was doing flying solo on the on the 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 cruise either nowadays you're like i'm unionized good luck firing me <laughs> also I'm, I'm going on a cruise when you're casting put that chick up one more time when you're when you're casting for the head of the pta do you have one of the lander sisters like do you have one you know the perkiest biggest hair blonde Big titty blonde ever? Like, don't you do the cute brunette who, you know, takes the Sensible glasses way. off and has that, that look? Oh, here's you know, my you, question. You, oh. Yes. Is she supposed to be a mean girl or is she nice? She's nice. Oh, she's, well, then she's, I don't in, know. she's in love. And like, don't you go with the kind of Lisa Loeb type right, yes. and not the blonde, like the bubble headed Corvette model? Corvette, right. Like sensible. You know, right. just casting for that. Yeah. Yeah, they yeah. went the wrong direction. Someone must have been banging you her. You should write a letter. I shall. All I right. I love that swimsuit. Um, let me tell you about uh, Simply Safe, award winning home security system engineered with the latest technology to keep your family safe. But what really sets Simply Safe apart is its highly trained security experts who are always there when you need them. When an alarm goes off, a person who cares is there to call and make sure you're okay. Get the fire or police department uh, right away. Summon them. Even if you're just having a problem setting your system, a person who cares is going to be there with a friendly chat, a quick resolution to whatever the situation is. U.S. News called Simply Safe the best home security of 2021. It is. Two eyes, by the way. Simply Safe, right, Dawson? To find out how Simply Safe can help make you feel safe and secure at home, visit simplysafe.com slash Adam today to customize your system and get a free security camera. That's simplysafe.com slash Adam today. All right. Well, one of the uh, more interesting thinkers of our time, uh, Zuby, is uh, going to, we're going to, is he in England? Or he's certainly abroad. Well, he doesn't live yes, in the he United is. States. So, uh, time difference but we'll figure that out i was uh reading a thread i thought it was uh fascinating mm. and uh we'll have it was a 20 part or actually 21 part Damn. thread that zuby laid down last night and we'll uh talk to him and we'll go through that thread right after this hey geico do you own do you rent well you do one or the other right you know 
It's hard work out there. Owning, renting. You want to save some money? How about your bundle? Bundle your policies at GEICO. GEICO makes it easy to bundle the homeowners or renters insurance along with your auto policy. It's a good thing, too, because you got so much to do already. Go to GEICO.com. Get a quote. See just how much you could save at GEICO. That is GEICO.com today. That's GEICO.com. It's time to check Adam's voicemail. Adam, I've been doing the whole left turn on red now for the last year and a half because of you. And today, I went around four cars to make my left-hand turn with zero cars coming the other direction. And I actually heard a guy yell, you can't do that. And I just thought to myself, shut up. Put your mask back on. Love the show. Thanks. You can leave us a message at 888-634-1744. Well, musician and author and provocateur, Zuby has joined us from uh, England. I'm glad we're able to get you on. Word of Zuby is the name of the album. And uh, all his books and music and merch are available at teamzuby.com. But uh, I just, can you hear us, Zuby? Yeah, I got you, man. Thanks for uh, checking in on very late notice. No, that's all good, man. Good to talk to you again. Uh, Zuby not only set the uh, deadlift record while identifying as a woman, but he also beat the UK women's bench press record for reps while identifying as a woman. So that's got to look pretty good on your (laughs) mantelpiece, Zuby. Thank you. Neither one was that difficult, but um, I appreciate it. I was uh, struck by reading your... A Twitter thread chain last night. I just kept reading on. I found it that was all so spot on and also interesting. I uh, actually went over it in an episode of uh, me and Dr. Drew's show earlier that we taped earlier today. And uh, Drew was a big fan of it as well. So I thought uh, it'd be nice just to kind of go through them and uh, and maybe just break them down uh, one by one and, and what your thoughts were when you composed them. Yeah, sure thing, man. I'd be happy to elaborate. I'll do my best. Zuby, by the way, went to uh, Oxford. Sorry, university. It's time to tweet explain. It's not really a game. It's just what we ask you to explain your tweet. Tweet explain. All right, so at Zuby Music says, 20 things I've learned or had confirmed about humanity during the pandemic. Number one, people would rather be in the majority than be right. Mm. Mm, yeah. Zuby? Yeah. Okay, so uh, well, how does this work? I just go through them and yeah. elaborate on it a little? Yeah, well, well how did well, you come yeah. to that conclusion? We can all jump in. I mean, I think I've experienced it firsthand and there's many many examples mm. of it just the wuhan lab leak theory coming from a pangolin that everyone was on board with a year ago is a perfect example of people with no information one way or the other just jumping onto a side because they didn't want to be ostracized but how say zuby yeah sure thing i mean uh, one running theme through a lot of these is really just the social nature of human beings right we are very uh, tribal animals and people do not like to go against the herd. There's a small percentage of people who are comfortable and happy to do so and perhaps even enjoy it, but it's certainly a minority of people. The vast majority of people will go along to get along. This has even been shown in something like the ash experiment. That's the one where they uh, get people to draw, draw lines of different lengths and, you know, say which one is longer. And if, if everyone else in the group is saying that the shorter one is longer, then the majority of people will also say that the shorter one is longer, even though right in front of them, they can see that the line is shorter, but they want to go along with everybody else. Yeah. Does, for you, do you feel like, so obviously your nature and your wiring, your education, your experiences you're not going to say the line that is shorter was longer just to kind of get along. And mm. some people do that to drum up business. Some people are trying to be provocateurs sure. or some people look at it as, you know, you know, we, there's extreme versions of this. We've all 
known where people just go out and they try to, you know, clickbait or, right. or whatever. Troll. And then there's other people who just feel like, well, it's not longer, so I'm going to say it. And those people mm-hmm. usually get accused of being the provocateurs, but there is a group of people who just don't believe right. this this thing. But how, what group do you think you would fall into, Zuby? Uh, yeah, I mean, I very much I don't go against the grain purely for the sake of going against the grain. You know, sometimes the majority is correct, but if something doesn't make sense to me and I don't think it's right, then I'm not going to go along with it. I could be standing by myself in a room of a hundred people who are saying the opposite. And if I think I'm right, I'm going to say what I think is correct. I mean, in this past year and a half, and this is really what's... Well, can I say uh, this quickly, okay, Zuby? When you can squat 530, mm-hmm. then <laughs> you have more confidence being that lone voice. You know what I mean? When, you can handle yourself. Yeah. When you can't do more than three push-ups, you tend to zip it. But uh, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, sure thing, man. I mean, uh, to give to give an interesting indicator, I mean, I don't know what it's like where you guys are at, but um, you know, I'm, I'm in the UK, but I was actually in Portugal a couple weeks ago. And in Portugal, I was not about 90% of people there were wearing masks outdoors at all times. Now, you know, people can question the efficacy of masks, but there's never been any logic at all behind wearing a mask outside, right? Even mm-hmm. people who are supposedly mask proponents, uh, generally, if they're being honest, would agree, okay, wearing one outside doesn't do anything especially in the fresh air and hot sun but yet there are millions hundreds of millions if not billions of people around the world to this day i'm sure there are fully vaccinated people in la millions of them wandering around with masks on outside um and that's not logical it's not rational it's not scientific it's kind of a herd mentality thing it's also a team sport i mean you've seen people literally tweeting and posting on instagram i wear a mask because i don't want people to think i'm a republican or i don't want people to think i'm conservative so you don't want to get shamed too Mm -hmm. you don't want to be the one that everyone's pointing at yeah exactly exactly whereas if everyone else were to take their masks off suddenly that person would feel comfortable also doing the same Mm -hmm. so that is that's an indicator of what i'm saying you know people would rather be in the majority then be right or do what makes sense. All right. uh, Number two, Dawson. Number two, at least 20% of the population has strong authoritarian tendencies, which will emerge under the right conditions. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's a big one. Uh, This this is something I've always sort of suspected, but again, over the past year and a half, you've really seen that being brought to a head. So much of the stuff going on really is people getting off on telling other people what to do and trying to force things upon other people. You know, it's not enough for them to uh, wear a mask or stay at home or get a vaccine. They want to force other people to do the same. And you've actually seen some people are willing to, uh, it seems, you know, certainly rhetorically go to pretty extreme lengths to try to enforce this, which is pretty strange. And these are people who have been walking amongst us all, all of the time, but it's not until you give someone some semblance of power or control over another person that you really sort of see how that manifests. I, I, you know, you see this and I think one of the, one of the craziest things about it all is it makes it very easy to understand a lot of history. And, you know, we look back at this lots of atrocities in the 20th centuries and we question how they happened or why people were complicit, how people went along with it. Why didn't people say something or do something? And, um, I think we have the clear answers to a lot of this stuff, which is kind of dark, but it's revealing. Well, it's an interesting time we're living in. For instance, I've been told many times, like, uh, no more tweeting about the teachers unions. Mm -hmm. And I go, why? (laughs) Because we're trying to sell a TV show. We can't sell the TV show if you're talking about the teachers unions. And I'm like... Well, where am I wrong about the teachers' unions? And then people go, the "No, we agree with you, but just don't don't say anything because we don't want to get <laughs> we want to sell this TV show." And then ten minutes later, I do it again because I'm like, "Well, fuck it, you got to prove to me why I'm wrong, right. not just tell me to knock knock off doing shit that happens to be statistically correct." But it's a weird, it's weird how many people just go right along. Just it it they they want to they don't they don't be thrown out of the club. They want commerce they want business they want to sell a show and it's just don't do fall in line this yes well zuby referenced the ash study zuby you're familiar of course with the stanford prison experiment oh, sh- i would mm-hmm. say that that indicates that way more than 20 percent have authoritarian oh, being... tendencies in, 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 yeah. in the right position 
Yeah, I was I was being conservative with that twenty percent. I didn't want to um, I, I didn't want to say I don't know forty percent or fifty percent or something. I just said okay, it's a, I think it's at least twenty. But like the Stanford prison experiment, when you just hear about it, you think, well, that would never be me. And then if you These really, yeah, yeah, if you really widen out the camera, you think, oh God, that could be me right now, and I don't even realize it. Mm. Yeah, but I think I, it's important to be cognizant of things like that because then. At least if you're aware of what these experiments even are, right, mm-hmm. you can then think and see in real world situations, oh, wait, hang on. This is sort of like that. Let me do the right thing. All right. Let's go to number three, Dawson. Fear of death is only rivaled by the fear of social disapproval. Mm-hmm. The latter could be stronger. Mm. Yeah, I think this sort of confirms what we were just saying. I mean, I believe that the biggest phobia in the world is what's called glossophobia, which is actually the fear of public speaking. Right. I believe they've done some studies yeah. where they've shown more people are afraid of public speaking. That's where Seinfeld than, says people would statistically rather be in the co- in the coffin than standing next to it giving a eulogy. Hmm. Exactly. Exactly. And that's because of the fear of social disapproval. Mm-hmm. Um, the reason the what blocks a lot of people from doing a lot of things is the fear of social disapproval. Now, sometimes that's a good thing. You know, there there are times where social disapproval should maintain certain standards and boundaries, but it can be as something as simple as, you know, there's someone who wants to start a YouTube channel or start a podcast or deliver a speech or something, and they don't want to do it because they're so terrified of people, you know, imagining that people are going to think that they're stupid or going to make a mistake or, you know, someone's going to write a nasty tweet, leave a mean comment, all of that stuff, and it really freezes people you know it's interesting because i've i've always being a comedian and living in los angeles was kind of wondered where the other comedians where their voices how come i'm not hearing any pushback pushback against the man you know so i've always said trump is no longer the man gavin newsom's the man if you live in california that's the man when he's saying no more outdoor dining or no more walking on the beach then that is your man right. and you need to push back against him. And I was sort of sitting there thinking like, well, as a comedian, I'm, um, I have calluses built up. I'm used to people disagreeing with what I'm saying or call me an asshole <laughs> or being up on stage. And, you know, I was just in Alaska talking about, uh, how, how much, uh, the, the, the frozen salmon that I got at the Whole Foods, I like just as much as the shit I pulled out of the river Boo! and caught fresh and the whole place turned on me. But I was like, well, those are my feelings. But I'm a, I'm a big boy. Like I'm, so I thought, well, my comedians have an advantage in that department. But turns out comedians are pretty damn sensitive because I've not oh, heard, yeah. I've not heard any, any voices of any comedians. Now, you guys are going to tweet me and go, oh, there's this guy named Rob who lives in Pennsylvania. Right. He's a comedian. He's a, He features for Bill Burr when he comes to town. But it's like, I'm talking about Mainstream. comedians with something to lose. Yeah. I'm mm-hmm. talking about people who are going to get their shows taken away or not get their next special up on Netflix. I've not heard a peep out of any of them. It's it's the exact same thing across the entertainment industry. I mean, I'm a, I'm a musician. Throughout this whole past year and a half, how many musicians have you seen? By the way, keep in mind, of course, musicians also have not been able to tour. Like they, we've, we've been massively hit by this, by these restrictions. How many musicians have stood up and taken a stand in the UK and the USA? You know, in the UK, I can count them on, you know, wh- one hand because I know who they all are and we've all connected over this past year and a half. Um, but in the US, how many people have said, you know what, like, I have a problem with this, right? 100% on bullshit. bullshit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Motor City Madman. Ted Nugent. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's go on to number four, Dawson. Uh, number four. Propaganda is just as effective in the modern day as it was 100 years ago. Access to limitless information has not made the average person any wiser. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's real. I, I mean, I think we used to think that the problem was lack of information. And I think that the internet and social media has made it clear that that is not the case. If anything, the propaganda is probably just faster and more sophisticated now. Mm-hmm. Well, also, what we didn't really, um, maybe, what we weren't prepared for in terms of uh, how this how this works is... We didn't we so we thought when stuff came down the pike 
that it was going to get sort of a fair shake. So if somebody brought up hydroxychloroquine or ivermectin, then we'd go, well, all right, well, let's see if it right. works or zinc or with uh, those three, the combination or whatever is a therapeutic. Like, we'll just, we'll just see what happens. Or back to the uh, lab leak theory. If somebody said it came from a lab in Wuhan, They'd go, okay, well, let's see what that happened. We didn't know that the powers that be would then sort of organize and actively go against it. So it's, it's, it's almost there was a machine that just cropped up and that actually actively fought against the things that should have fallen in the, I always say the agnostic basket of, I don't know, mm-hmm. maybe, maybe it came, maybe let's, let's wait and see. So we weren't really prepared for that. You know, we just thought, mm. well, we're going to get information and then we'll be able to digest the information and people will have different takeaways from the information. But we didn't know there was going to be a machine was going to rise up right. and try to shut all that stuff down. Yeah. I mean, I think that machine has been there for quite a while. I mean, yeah, uh, you, you guys are now, I don't know, seven months out of a, a Trump presidency. I mean, we saw throughout the whole four for years of the Trump presidency, how that machine can be mechanized to push a certain narrative and to get people to even believe things that are not true. There are millions of people who believe that Trump told people to inject a bleach. There are millions of people who think that Trump called white supremacists very fine people. I mean, people are still talking about the 6th of January thing, talking about you know a, a deadly insurrection. As far as I know, there was one person who was a Trump supporter, Ashley Babbitt, who was killed and people are talking as if, you know, dozens of p- policemen were were slaughtered or something like this. So and that's the narrative they're running with, which is it's it's not facts. Right. And that's not even defending what happened on January 6th. It's just saying that the facts have been so distorted. And again, people people go along with it because they have their biases. So I think that machine has been reconfigured to censor and block and guide the narrative a lot around the whole uh, COVID situation. I mean, my, my most recent podcast episode, I couldn't even put it on YouTube um, because it goes against their terms of service because you're literally not allowed to talk about hydroxychloroquine or ivermectin or discuss some issues around it. Like you have to go exactly with the WHO guidelines, CDC guidelines, or they'll they'll potentially yank your whole channel. Yeah, one of the big things I was getting into with uh, Drew and I've gotten into it on this show a couple of times, so I'd be curious about it. There's some data coming out. First thing, sort of, I always thought the main sort of crux core battle here has been with ages. So when this thing started, I was looking back on uh, us doing a podcast about it with a local newsman, and I kept saying, where are the ages? I want the ages. How come I'm not getting ages? And they're like, well, it's HIPAA laws or something like that. Or they don't have the information. I'm like, how come they don't have the information? Every time there's a car wreck, I get the age of the person yeah. who died on the freeway. We're just telling a story about a woman got hit on the one-on-one. She's 45 years old. She's not between the ages of 20 and 55. She's 45. You know what I mean? We got an age. And I start to feel early that in, 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 in order to fully spread panic, you couldn't say that the largest group age-wise that died in America, at least, was 85 and older. That, that does not sufficiently spread panic. We have to shut the schools down. We have to scare the fuck out of your kids. And we have to explain that this is sort of an equal opportunity killer. Now there's some info that in some places the median age of the person who died of COVID is actually older than the actual death rate in that community or that country or that state or whatever it is. There's going to be more and more of that coming. But the age thing to me was the biggest. It wasn't a conspiracy in that Wuhan lab leak or ivermectin. That's a little more easier to sort of go, well, why did they go so hard against that? Or why did they turn against ivermectin something or hydroxychloroquine or something that's been around for a million years and many millions of people are on and all that kind of stuff? It's easier. But the general age thing, when you look at a chart of, you know, zero to 18, just go down the line, 
it's 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 almost non-existent until you Nothing. get to over 50 or over even over 60. It just doesn't even move until you get there. But we needed to scare the fuck out of everyone and shut everything down. And you would have never scared the fuck out of everyone if you told them it was basically 89 year olds that were mainly being claimed mm. by this. So I think when the dust settles to me, it's the age issue is the biggest. It's nuts because we've had that information for more than a year, right? And what's nuts is this is so globally coordinated because what you're saying over there in the U.S., it's the same in the U.K., same in Canada, all over Europe, uh, Australia, New Zealand, parts of Africa, et cetera. I mean, in the U.K., and again, this, this data has been logged by the NHS every single week since this thing began, the average age of death in the U.K. is 82 Average age of death with COVID is 82. The average life expectancy in the UK is 82. Right. right. All right. Less than a, I, be, I believe less than a thousand people throughout th from the very beginning, I believe less than a thousand people under the age of 50 without pre existing conditions have died with this disease. Also in the UK, the official count um, is 20, is, it's the number of deaths within 28 days of a positive COVID test. That is the official count. Mm -hmm. Death for any reason within 28 days of a positive test. So you could test positive, um, you know, get shot 20 days later, and you're classified as a COVID death. Well, dive yeah, how are you going to justify shutting down an entire society if you go the average death of COVID is 81 or 82, and the average death of a citizen without COVID is 82. That's that's that does not give you zero sum reason to shut down a society. And that's, yep. the, that's the part that I find interesting, which is what's the motivation? If you have that information, then what's the motivation? Well, think, is it purely nefarious know. or is it? I think it's it's, you know, people like uh, what's her name? Barbara Ferrer or whatever, especially at the beginning, saying, you know, that it's um, the, the end justifies the means. Yes. So, uh, you know, I we agree. can get people to be more protective and be safer and be more cautious if we just keep them thinking that maybe it'll affect them. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's the same thing of AIDS as an equal opportunity killer, you know, heterosexual or gay or you know, secondhand smoke kills 56,000 Americans a year. It's just like we're going to scare you into doing what what we want, which works pretty effectively. For a short period of time, it's like a parent can do that for a short period of time. But eventually, it steps catch on, on, catches oh, on, out. and they stop listening. And we may be getting close to that uh, point. Hey, uh, Zuby, we have a porn star waiting in the uh, in the wings. <laughs> and uh, and I wanted to get through all 21 of these. But come back next week. Let's just do, let's do one more. Should we go to okay. six? Are we at six five. now or five? We're at number six right now. Many politicians and large corporations will gladly sacrifice human lives if it is conducive to their political and financial aspirations. Oh, provocative. That's a big one, man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, look, I mean, look at history. We've always known this. Um, and more importantly, now look at look at the present. Right. There is an effective treatment. There are effective treatments that are cheap and widely available for this virus both as a prophylactic, as a treatment, et cetera. You can't even talk about it on YouTube. You'll get your account deleted. You can't even talk about it on social media. There are doctors out there. I mean, my dad is, my dad is a medical doctor as well. I know multiple medical doctors. So oh, I've been you black to musicians all with all your that. information and medical yeah, doctors. Yeah, and I've, been, I've been talking to doctors all throughout this thing. And the suppression and the silencing of people is absolutely insane. It's, it's criminal as far as I'm concerned. Because people are here saying, oh, you know, millions of people worldwide have died of this thing. And it's like, yeah, well, people are still to this day suppressing treatments. If you go to, if you get into an ICU with COVID, they don't give you treatment. <laughs> they don't do treatment. Like you're just, you're just, you're just kind of left there. And if you get really bad, they'll put you on a respirator. I think if you get on a respirator, are you talking about percent England? chance you're going to die. Well, yeah, didn't huh? Trump go and get tons of treatment when he got COVID? Yeah. I mean, yeah, tr Trump, Trump got whatever he needed. Um, but generally, I mean, can, how easy is it to get ivermectin in the UK or in the USA, et cetera? Mm -hmm. Doctors are under threat of having their licenses revoked for prescribing it. I mean, you can't even talk about it. it. it the scariest, criminal. one of the scariest chapters is hearing doctors saying, um, I talked to a pharmacist and I want to get hydroxychloroquine. And they said, what's it for? Like, I'm not giving it to mm -hmm. you. 
that's a pharmacist telling a doctor who's treating a, a patient. Is that, that when you just say malaria? Yeah, malaria. Same thing. It's been yeah, spread I mean, out. I mean, if you really think about it, that's so dark. It is dark. Right. Don't like, fucking worry about like it. That's so disturbing. Like there's a treatment available. People want the treatment and they can't get it because there's no profit to be made from it because they'd rather push the vaccines, which they've got billions invested in. I mean, that's 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 nuts to me, man. I think that's um, I think we need a Nuremberg trials 2.0 when all the dust settles. But isn't that true of so many pharmaceuticals? I mean, this is a huge example of it. Uh, yeah, possibly, but not not like this. I mean, not not to this, not to this extent, well, the, to this degree. The part of this whole thing that feels so weird to me is I was, uh, I think it was Brett Weinstein or Weinstein. No one knows, but he has a pod. Stein. He, he was the guy who was at Evergreen. He was featured in my doc, No Safe Spaces. He was run off campus oh, right. because he wouldn't do the, yeah. he, he was threatened. A very, a very liberal professor. A very liberal guy had someone on to talk about ivermectin and they YouTube pulled his shit down. Mm-hmm. And it's like, mm-hmm. well wait a minute, why is YouTube so caught up in this? And by the way, these are, you know, professional guys who are very well trained, who are who have hard science backgrounds, inter- you know, do, conducting an interview. Why? Well, that's their opinion. Why? Doctors, that, that, that's shit a, varies that, all that's the time. A, sorry, I jump in. That, that's a doctor who I believe has treated thousands of COVID patients. So, um, th- this, this, this isn't just some guy. This is, you know, the guy who invented... The interview with the guy who invented the mRNA vaccine technology, they pulled that one down. <laughs> this is the guy who invented who invented the technology because he's not going 100. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it's bananas. I mean, and now they're pushing the vaccines on children. I mean, even the WHO, like, you know, who were quest- questionable, but obviously they're invested in the vaccine. Even on the WHO website, it says that people under 18 should not take this vaccine. And here we are now, you know, giving children ice cream to try to get them to take this injection from a disease that can't kill them anyway. I mean, it, it's bonkers, man. Well, Zuby, I'd love to do more of this with you. I, I hope we can maybe pick this up next week, call in or okay. something, and we'll see if we can get through another five or six of these. Because <laughs> this is uh, interesting stuff. I'm, I'm a big fan, and I really enjoyed the uh, thread. And we'll, we'll, we'll get into it on this show as well the, at a later Thank date. You. So thanks, Zuby. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Uh, boy. Can we just of... stop for a minute and enjoy that crystal clear connection we had? I was know. Nice. That was really good. Meanwhile, I got uh, some guy zooming in from Burbank or something. And so uh, we lost the connection <laughs> it's a, again. It's a ca- two cans and a wire. Uh, all right. Well, talk about range. Peter North, porn star extraordinaire. Does he have 21 things he learned? <laughs> yeah. we can go over he's uh he's retired now oh. from uh from porn but he's an actor he's a director he's a producer and uh, they're shooting a doc on him so i think they're going to come in here and do that uh oh first i want to tell you about uh liquid iv man if you're working out and uh you should you want to jump start your day but it's hot outside man we're getting into the championship rounds out here as far as heat goes mm-hmm. You need uh, to be proactive. Keep your body fueled up and uh, hydrated. One stick of liquid IV and 16 ounces of water hydrates faster and more efficiently than water alone. Great flavors like watermelon, strawberry, and lemon lime. No preservatives, less sugar than an apple. Dawson packs these things. I pack these things. When you're on the road, you're traveling, there's time changes. Maybe you're drinking a little too much. You need your liquid IV. In response to the COVID-19, by the way, Liquid IV has donated 4 million servings to hospitals, first responders, food banks, veterans, and active military as well. It's Liquid IV, right, Dawson? Grab your Liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco, where you can get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code ADAM at checkout. That's 25% off anything you order when you get better hydration today using promo code ADAM at liquidiv.com. All right. Porn legend, the decorator, Peter North. In studio next. And now, a totally innocuous word that sounds dirty when Mike Dawson says it. Peter. Ew. Let's get back to the Adam Carolla Show. Peter North, (laughs) uh, porn film legend, I think we would call him. Retired, but has over 2,500 credits as an actor, 74 as a director, good to see you again, my friend. Good to see you. Um, I was reading here. I'm 
you were in the, I don't know, is there a golden age of, of porn? You know, like I always say to people, there's a golden age of heavyweight boxing. Yeah. You know, yeah, people no. remember I, the I, I get you on that. It, it, I think there was probably, I wasn't part of the 70s, but the, I think the 80s and 90s, everybody liked the 80s and 90s a lot more. And people are going back to that, that are, are watching these new films and stuff like that. They're going back to the vintage stuff. Yeah. And that would be the golden age, basically. Was it, uh, I grew up in the San Fernando Valley. I remember, you know, I went to the Sadie Hawkins dance with Christy Canyon's sister, Carla. <laughs> <laughs> well, she asked me, was I wasn't going to say yeah. no. Carla Canyon? <laughs> yeah, she had a uh, Armenian last name. I, okay. I think, as I that, that as I recall, yes. <laughs> yes. yeah. Yeah. Um, so I I remember <laughs> like living here and, and when all this shit was going down in the eighties. Uh, where were you? You start off in Nova Scotia. Yeah, basically um, Halifax, Nova Scotia. I I, I came out here in eighty one, eighty two. You know, I didn't. I, it wasn't on my radar to get into anything in particular. I just came out with a two month return on my ticket. If I got a job in, within two months, I would stay. If I didn't, I'd be going back home. And I happened to, to get a job at the uh, one of the last Jack Lane's health clubs that existed, and uh, just went on from there. You know, different jobs from you know. Um, insect you know cleaning guy and, and basically just sales for health clubs and I, I just there's so many jobs i did but the thing is i wasn't legal for the first part of the you know time i was down here so you i were uh, under 18 well, no no and he no. didn't have a work oh, not visa. Legal. i didn't have a li legal oh, you work didn't have visa a so green basically card or work visa so yeah i had to uh, well the amnesty came around at that time around i think 87 88 89 and I went through that, and that you know they don't get uh, any kind of back taxes or anything like that on you. They they kind of just you know get you in and, and make sure they tax you for the rest of the time you're here. So it's, it says here you were discovered while while modeling athletic wear at a private party in L.A. in the uh, early '80s. And by the way, Peter put the Jack and Jack Lalane. By the way, I couldn't <laughs> let that joke go by. Uh, is, what's the story behind that? Um, actually, it it. it uh, it was kind of similar. It's that's pretty correct, you know. In a way, there's there's more to that whole. There's a whole backstory to that, and the do tell. <laughs> and the people who uh, were involved in that, um, you know, they uh, they were in in the industry, but on the other side of the industry that we discussed, I think before, um, as far as like some of the uh, gay movies and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and uh, you know. Not being my preference, but, you know, um, I owed them some money, and uh, we took care of the debt, and they turned me on to uh, world modeling, and uh, they said, you probably could do well. And I said, why not? I, Does, uh, you remember your first uh, scene, uh, boy-girl scene? You remember who that was with, where you were? Like, were you nervous? It was pre-Viagra. Interesting so thing, yes. It's that absolutely kind of pre-Viagra, yeah. Um, it was on Mulholland Drive on at a house location overlooking Universal Studios. <laughs> I do remember this. There were people laying out naked, you know, on the deck. So I, I thought, okay, I'll just lay out. And get, it got comfortable. It was very comfortable right from the beginning to me for some reason. And then there was like three girls and myself and another guy that were to work with the girls. And uh, I won't mention his name, but he had he had problems, so I had to carry the scene with the three girls. Uh huh. And I basically Randy had, West. <laughs> no. <laughs> try uh, try Biff Malibu. Biff Malibu. <laughs> that that guy's a consummate pro. <laughs> you don't sully the name of Biff Malibu in the studio. <laughs> you keep that name out of your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So basically, I was just I had my hands behind my head, and I said, "Does this, this work?" I mean, it just it was it just. When you when you start, and that's the whole big thing. I, I talk to like other actors when they start. If they come out of the gate really good, they'll have confidence. I've always had confidence anyway because if there, I had an issue, I had no problem getting myself an edge. Uh, I could do it with. I wouldn't want people to be quiet and all this kind of stuff. I said, "Do you keep doing your thing, talk, you know, and stuff like that." So, basically, that was the first, you know, and and when I did the pop shot, I guess that. Um, pre that director, he got on the phone and it just got around. Like, I was being booked like way more than I could even attempt to even try. 
Right. Chuck, it's your cousin, Marvin Barry. <laughs> <laughs> you know that new sound? <laughs> wow. So uh, Biff Malibu's loss was uh, the decorator's gain. Yeah. Yeah. They just thought it was a little volcanic eruption there. <laughs> and they just, I, I didn't know any different. I had not watched a porno movie in my life. And, uh, and I, I don't really watch my stuff, but uh, I, yeah, had never watched a porn movie in my life, and uh, I just didn't know it was abnormal. So you know, abnormal Peter's Russia. claim to fame is the abnormal amount of ejaculate that oh, comes wow. out of his yes. penis yeah, and good. ultimately good. lands on the actress, and sometimes the sound guy. <laughs> <laughs> there had to be there had to be protocols. Like did those guys show up like they're at a Gallagher <laughs> yeah. concert? Yeah. Yeah. Holding yeah. The oh, the Gallagher, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Damn, I yeah. I've, I've, now, were there actresses who were like, "I don't really want to work with Peter because of this uh, unique gift he possesses"? I just had my hair done. Yes, there yeah. have been a few girls, not too many, that that you know just said you know not in the eyes and stuff like that. And and I basically tell them, I really can't control the aim on this gun. You know, it it goes off and just you know. So a lot of times it's over their head or past them. Which looks impressive, I guess. Yeah, you a know? warning shot across the back. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, but I getting... end up hitting directors or other actors. <laughs> I mean, Scorsese well, yeah. on the next line. There's a there's a list of casual <laughs> there's a list of casualties out there. <laughs> You know, maybe I'm getting maybe I'm showing my age, but now when I watch some of the old vintage porn. I feel bad for the homeowner because they got a really nice sectional <laughs> sofa and nobody's laid a furniture right. pad no down. Guard. There's nothing going on. Yeah. And you just see the guy just <laughs> blasting Destroy off. It. And it's clearly not the house of the porn star. Oh, yeah, or, no. yeah. That's a set. Or the 21-year-old runaways right. banging. Right. That is somebody's nice house somebody's living room. in Malibu Location, yeah. or up, in, up off of Mulholland. <laughs> yeah. and, and some place, some damage done. Some places will, will have you cover their furniture and stuff like that yeah. on some of those like, like some of the locations they've actually used in mainstream movies too oh really yeah yeah i think there was one place we sh uh, shot at it was like uh, harrison ford did a movie there with uh, but not at the same time <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah. i just want to be i didn't want the audience to be confused <laughs> so uh you are now so this is like kind of out of boogie nights yeah, right yeah. So uh, you do the first pop shot, and the guy literally pulls his you know head out right. from behind the viewfinder and goes, "Holy scratches. shit!" And then that guy gets on the phone, and then they go, "You got to work with this dude, or this guy needs to be in your next film." Yeah, I was don't like, do that. <laughs> yeah, that's Burt Reynolds. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, it, it they were booking me seven days a week, and I had to take. I took weekends off. I wanted to be normal. Like I went down to the orange, you know, behind the orange curtain in Orange County, and try to separate my life and in, in, to normalcy in, in a way I could and took weekends off because a lot of my friends had weekends off. So I just, you know, I turned down like a bunch of work, but it, it kept my sanity basically. How much recognition, like street recognition, were you getting at the very beginning versus the sort of height of things um, versus now? Like in, in a weird way, you could... You know, there's lots of celebrities. It's hard to keep track of all the guys who played Spider-Man mm. over the last <laughs> 10 years. I might not recognize the last guy who played Spider-Man right. if we're in a restaurant. But if Ron Jeremy walked in, <laughs> I would definitely know it. I yeah. could probably smell his musk before <laughs> he even turned the corner. Sure. That's for but sure. I would I would tend to recognize I might recognize you know Christy Canyon or Ginger Lynn or something like some of these the household legends. names. Right. Some of these legends. More than celebrities, in a sense, because there's there were less of them. There was this like core of like eighteen or that's twenty true. people. And they, yeah. that's who who they were. Right. That's yeah. all there was. Yeah, the the recognition I think really started um, after the first year. And girls I dated in my personal life kind of was saying, you're really popular. <laughs> I know a lot of people, I guess. You know, I played it down. Like I, I kind of, you know. Oh, I wish I was that guy or something like so that. So many yeah. people from Nova Scotia out here in Orange <laughs> County, boy. And um, after a couple of years, it was a little. It started getting a little crazier because, uh, like, I didn't really tell my friends, like, like my buddies in in California, never told them, and they they saw something and they said, oh, you know, they 
flipped out and kind of like we're cool about it. But my friends back home didn't know in East Coast of Canada. And they basically said, wow, look, you're doing well. Do it. Keep doing what you're doing. So you must have had situations, especially when it was kind of Wild West. Like I always say the best time in history is pre-AIDS, mid-Coke. So, yeah. um, so AIDS doesn't exist and Coke is good for you. And that's going to lead <laughs> yeah. to a lot of debauchery. Yeah. Um, there must have been stories of guys wanting to pay you to bang their wife or just chicks knowing who you were, who are like civilians who just did yeah, just like, you know, Mike Tyson needs a bodyguard. And you go, why does Mike Tyson need a bodyguard? He's the baddest man. I'm like, because guys at a bar want to fight Mike Tyson right. just to say right. They blew Peter North. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Totally. Well, yeah. There's got to be some of way. those stories. Yeah, there actually, um, there's a few of those. There was actually, there's probably more stories of me losing girls or girlfriends or girls I've dated because of that. Um, you know, it's just hard to relate to. You have to be pretty open-minded or something like that. But I've had uh, some girls, I think one was on a Dos Equis, uh, poster, um, and she was at the uh, some bar and basically... Uh, kind of uh wanted to get together and we we got together and and it was it was crazy and it was absolutely fantastic and she she said afterwards she goes oh my god you should, you should be a porn star and after well, I, she didn't know you she didn't know and we did it like all across throughout the house and it just yeah and and she but there and then she told someone at the bar and then they so they knew and so they wanted to kind of like they were curious. Mm -hmm. The curiosity ones were the... But I'm talking about knowing you're a porn star. Oh, yeah. I mean, you kind of hear these stories, these whispers of, like, some high-end female models mm -hmm. who, for a million bucks, will have sex with the, you know, Shaw of whatever, mm -hmm. the, the guy from right. wherever. Yeah. Like, there, there's that world, right? Sure. I mean, just, you know, it's uh, not on the books, yeah, but for sale. people's got cash. Yeah. yeah. Was there some of those? Um, I've had, like, you know, on my internet site, the, uh, for the longest period of time, PeterNorth.com, I had, uh, they had a guest book. So people would write in and stuff like that from every country, everywhere. And uh, I remember particularly this one guy from Texas said that uh, he, his wife is, is, is hot. She's gorgeous. She, she wants, you know, she wants to be with you while, you know, while I'm watching and stuff like that. I understand that. I get that. You know, that little voyeurism. And another guy was getting married in Chicago, and he said, I wanted to, you to be with my wife before I we oh. got married. Oh, wow. That's a risky little game. I yeah. know. I, I, I got a lot. Was she tight? <laughs> <laughs> Both those things never happened, I, by the way. I don't feel like that marriage stood the test of time. Not built to last. Or is it the ultimate marriage? Or maybe it's the maybe they were the, living the lifestyle. You know? Or maybe he just wanted to bang Nina Hartley. Mm. And he was like, hey, <laughs> turn about it's fair play. <laughs> yes. I'm always curious, uh, and I'm sure you, are, you could write a book on this. What is it like? What was it like when the camera turned off in terms of being professional on a set, working with the women or the men you're working with? Was it uncomfortable? Do you just turn off as soon as the camera's off? No, I'm just, I'm just me. I'm, you know, I'm this regular guy from Canada that just happened to be able to have like a ridiculous pop shot and do what I had to do, you know? So it was like it, a lot of, a lot of sets were like, were professional and, and basically to the point, you know, and I wasn't one of those creepy guys that want, you know, wanted to date the girls afterwards right. and stuff like that. I didn't have a reputation for that, even though I did go out with a, a couple of girls in the industry uh, a little bit, but didn't have that reputation because I had, you know, I went down to Orange County and kind of separated the two lives. It, it, it's kind of, that's what uh, my documentary is about, yeah. kind of humanizing Peter North a little bit where he was f fighting, you know, to be in one world and, and be in the other world at the same time, which is very difficult. Like Arnold Schwarzenegger in True Lies mm. with Jamie Lee Curtis. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, it's 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 um it's a it's riding a fine line. We it's we were able rope. we were able to get paid. I mean, it's an industry where you know Christy Canyon's going to get paid more than um 
Uh, Malibu Rum <laughs> Stein. <laughs> Whatever his name was. Johnny, Johnny Biff Malibu. Biff Malibu. Biff Malibu. Biff Malibu. Yeah. I mean, Biff Malibu is probably not sitting pretty right now on a huge nest egg. I don't know. Maybe got into producing, but he did. Okay, he did. well, good. I always he did, did very well. Biff he did. would land on his balls. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, <clears throat> But were you getting paid that kind of money back then? Like, were you getting the female superstar? No, no. no. But were you? But you were getting paid more than the fellas. Many um, of them. They a lot of times the studios uh, they had their their rate. Oh, that and, was it. Yeah, and 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 there was like. Um, you know, there was you take it or you know we'll get someone else basically. So you weren't under contract with. No, never got never was on, and I didn't want to get contracted. But uh, I think I made the money when I became producer myself and the distribution. That's where that's where the money's really made. Where's it at now? Because it seems. I have no clue. It seems bizarre because <laughs> you seem like you can just go on the internet and watch right. free porn all, all I know. day long. So where's the money? Well, my internet company, because I did really well with, on the internet, more than what I expect, you know, for a, a male performer. I mean, you take Jenna Jameson, you know, she's going to knock it out of the ballpark. Um, but uh, we we did re really, really well on the internet. And we do, you have to kind of like work with the piraters. Mm -hmm. You know, you kind of give them some, some, so many minutes to show, mm. as long as they can, they it's directed to your site. Mm. So Smart. You kinda, yeah, you kind of like you everybody, can't pretend they don't exist. Yeah, everybody was trying to erase them out, and, and they had like we had two companies that that was their thing. That was just their thing is to go after you know piraters, and there were just like cockroaches that are like everywhere, and uh, it just kept going on. So it's just kind of work with them, and I think that's where everybody kind of oh. leveled that playing field a little bit. Do you have any good stories about um, you're doing a scene with a first timer and halfway into it, she says, I can't do this. I got to leave or loses her nerve while she's getting her makeup put on or starts crying in the middle of it. Something good. Um, I don't recall anything like that. I know that I, you know, we, we talk before scenes and stuff like that. And I would talk to different girls, and I say, you, "You know what you're signing up for, because there's going to be ramifications. You don't think that someone's going to know someone that knows your father or ramifications be a damn good I series. Ramifications thirteen, <laughs> kind of like that movie I did, uh, Ram O. Oh. Oh, oh yeah, that's good. Oh, Ram oh. reminds me of the great, late great Dick Rambone. <laughs> it, was, it was a five foot poster, um, stand up poster with that. <laughs> Did you ever Dick talk? Rambone is still in the business, <laughs> along with uh, Biff, Pete, Malibu. Biff Malibu, Biff Malibu, FM Bradley, and uh, Frank James. Oh wow! Uh, Just to name a few. You know, you know, so, yeah. Uh, I know yeah. Frank. I, I talked to Ron Jeremy about Frank James. Once. He was like, <laughs> oh, he was um, part American Indian. He used to drink a little bit. He got, a lot, he was he, he got American, a lot. He got a lot of control. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. I think Frank James was Jesse James brother maybe really yeah interesting i i gotta figure out where we the got gunslinger <laughs> yeah i gotta i gotta <laughs> fm bradley was field marshal bradley the guy won the, the desert campaign for us in world war ii Stolen Stolen <laughs> Stolen he was, was a huge black dude <laughs> yeah that is and uh, there was uh oh, rambo ram Oh, 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 we're looking oh, at the cover oh, right now. Karina Candy Collins, Evans. Candy Evans. Candy Evans was, oh, yeah. You like her? Oh, yeah. Well, do you have anyone you didn't like working with other than Biff Malibu? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, there wasn't know. really anybody I didn't like, but it, it, you know, like a lot of times you do scenes, it ends up being like they're scripts, you know, I, people don't believe that, but they're scripts. And you kind of like, you're a character in this in this movie and this other person's a character in this movie, and you may happen to be in about six different movies, and you're working with the same girl mm -hmm. because she's that particular either your wife or your secretary or this or that. So it's kind of like, yeah, that kind of got a little old. Was there any, ever anyone you said, I can't work with her, like on your no-fly list? Um, No. Actually, yeah. It's like an easy going Trish ride. Malibu, actually. Right. <laughs> Sister Fair <laughs> Food. Oh! Funny you mention that because on IMDb, Biff Malibu's wife is listed as Buffy Malibu. Oh, I love that! 
<laughs> well, let's not forget in the name department, Buffy Davis. Oh, yeah. F- Buffy Davis was a famous porn star who got her name from Buffy from Family Affair. Oh, wow. The sitcom. The wholesome sitcom? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to think about it. If the the right age, I think Tracy Lords was Jack Lord from Hawaii Five O. Wow. Well, if you if you think about the shit, so if you're older now and you grew up watching TV shows and just seeing all the names of the people right. on the TV show, and then and then I was going to go with Peter Brady if I ever got there. <laughs> Sorry, Peter. but the the point is, is now it's ten years later and you got to pick a name. Yeah. That's what's you're in not here. going with the great composers right. from the 16th century. <laughs> like you're just watching TV, being ignored by your family. Right. So you go with Buffy Davis. Now, what other good? Give us some good names from uh, from the past. Um, Seymour Butts. Oh well, he did the. Did he do the producing he, he or show, something? He did that Showtime. I think he was on Showtime for a uh, right. Bit, yeah, there was mm-hmm. Rocco Stiff Ready. Oh, that's right, mm-hmm. Rocco. I don't think sure. that's his name. Rocco <laughs> Stiff Ready, right? Mm. John, that's not it. That's not it. Oh, it, it. I think it's Sif Ready. Not that I know. Oh, mm. okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's. A, I think a lot of people uh, weren't crazy about like someone who it was obvious with a name. It's like, you know, Buck Naked or something oh, sure. like that. You know, sure. When right I out. when I did, my, I think I it was my second movie when I I came up with my na- my name is basically. Um, having lunch and it was on a big production actually probably a 200 dollars bu- uh budget on that um caballero or something like that it was mm-hmm. sw- swedish erotica it was like in uh um john leslie was one of the main characters great actor um and uh herschel savage and a few other you know directors and producers and actors and uh i was an extra on that and i came up with the name you know Okay, you're Peter. They call it a Peter. Someone showed me a Peter heater uh, in the wintertime one time where it was a sock that goes over your... A oh, Peter heater. Yeah. 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 Right. So I said, okay, Buffy. Peter, and when you're erect, you're going north. There you go. So, mm-hmm. and I'm up from up north, so... Yeah, it's perfect. Just all the, the pieces were there, so it was, it was pretty simple, sounded natural, you know? It's believable. It's, it's believable, good, yeah. yeah. Wow! Did the movie uh, Boogie Nights like struck you as as true to things you experienced or observed, or did you find it fantastical or a mix of both? Um, I think it's a little tighter on sets than that. You know? I'd imagine. Yeah, <laughs> you wouldn't. Yeah, it, it, some sets were a little bit crazy, but uh, I remember uh, being on one set where I guess Tracy Lords wasn't in that scene, but she was doing her own thing in the in the bedroom with a couple couple of guys, and. Um, Couple actors, Tom Byron, and uh, I think, and didn't Tom. Well, he, finished, dated, but he, didn't he dated. He dated a little. Bit, he dated Tracy Lords a little bit at the beginning. Did, didn't he? Wasn't there? I don't know what doc I was watching about somebody who had AIDS but didn't say anything. But there Mark was an Wallace. issue. Oh, that wasn't Tom Byron. It was Mark Wallace. So those two were like the two guys that were in before me that were always on every set. Mm-hmm. They're very reliable. You know, they you know, they want people that are reliable. They want guys that are reliable. I mean, Randy West was reliable. He wasn't big in any any sort. He, but he was, <laughs> but he he was reliable. Well, it's it's interesting because it's true when you see like Randy West in a porn movie, you go, "Why is that guy in a porn movie?" And it's like because yeah. he's prompt. Yeah, <laughs> and that's what you're looking for. And he's and yeah, he can do some good acting. He actually, guy was he's funny. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think we had him on the Man Show. Yeah, and he actually was. Um, I they asked me to be on the uh, um, uh, with Bill Maher on the uh, politically incorrect do mm-hmm. a little skit, mm-hmm. and I had committed to a project um, or a signing or a radio thing. It was already in. You know, it was already when I'm locked in on something, I I, I won't change that, and I, so I missed that um, that gig. And Randy West got that, and then Sublime wanted me on on, on a video, <laughs> and I missed. That gig because of uh, I had you know other bookings, and Randy West got that project too. <laughs> and we had him. I'm pretty sure we had him on an episode of The Man Show. I just remember singing his name mm-hmm. on a bus to the, Pahrump, the, I think. I remember. Randy I remember West. that thing. Was it was mm-hmm. it Griffith Park or or what park was that? We did the uh, oh the camp for right. the uh, adult thing. We did. Uh, we did porn. We did f- uh, fantasy porn camp or something, <laughs> something like, like that. that. You and Jimmy. <laughs> Yeah, I remember. All I remember. Idea, actually. I remember. Oh, it was hysterical. (laughs) I remember that bit. Maybe we can 
I don't know. I can find that. But uh, all I remember is we had to shoot until dark because um, there's a scene at the end where we're all sitting around the fireplace. <laughs> or not the fireplace, but the fire. Right. Like we were camping. Campfire, yeah. like a, and we had to shoot it with some porn actress who had some scare. We were telling ghost stories. <laughs> and she was like, well, one time I had to do... Uh, uh, a DP with two Puerto Rican guys, and everyone was like, "Oh, like, well, that, was a, that was a joke." But I had to go to Love Line and go to work yeah. that night, so I was like, "I got to be out of here at nine thirty-five, Ooh, probably at the latest, it. to hop in my car and hustle to uh, Culver City." But I, it's funny. The thing I remember most about a lot of shoots is having to leave. Right. <laughs> I, I, I heard you on the radio getting back with uh, Dr. Drew talking to you about how, how it was and stuff like that. Yeah, that night. Yeah. yeah, I did that with drunken pilots. They were at LAX and it was like 9.32 <laughs> and I was like, I gotta go! I gotta go! <laughs> we did that a lot. Um, sorry, Brian, you got something? Um, right, yeah, all right. So we sung the song taking a tour bus with all the main show crew so go, Randy West, Randy West, and everyone just sung it. Randy West, Randy West, because that's what you do on a bus. Yeah, that's the Randy West song, sorry. Um, sorry. I, I'm curious. You seem very affable, professional, easy to work with. Was prompt. It prompt. Prompt on time. Was, <laughs> after all oh, of these. Oh, the story behind that. Okay. <laughs> was there ever... Was there any, for anything you said, I can't, where was the line for you? What were you not interested in doing? Um, I was, back then, I wasn't really big on doing anal scenes because the, the girls had trouble. You know, I, they signed up for it because they get paid more. But, right. you know, you got to do what you signed up for. And it's like, I'm like, you know, it's taking forever. And I'm like, okay, let me take a break, get get the edge. And, and you know, it's like... It was, it was, yeah. It was, so that, that was, was a, more, it was a, literally a pain in the ass for you to deal with. Yeah. I mean, it really, it, but, was, but it wasn't it, worth it. It gave me that mind thought that, you know, like, God, I'm not really into anal, I guess, because. It, I'm well, not, I'll remember where we were. <laughs> 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 I'm trying to think, Max Pata, uh John Leslie, I remember John Leslie, but there's the other guy I always forget who was in the same of the same ilk. Jamie there, Gillis. Jamie Gillis. Oh, I knew crazy! I could count on you. Crazy for Jamie Gillis. And <laughs> Jamie Gill. There was a weird group of avant-garde sort of New York porn star guys who didn't look like porn stars. It wasn't like all buff and shaved and tan or anything. Not not a big hog. Like alt porn that. stars? He was actually a taxi driver. <laughs> Jamie was? Yeah. And and they were like kind of Jewish looking guys from, seemed like bohemian guys from New York. Like they, like they seemed Elliot to, Gouldish? What was he about? Elliot Gouldish, yeah. be kind of the artist of, they were in for the art of it or something. They weren't porn stars like you think right. of, right, of yeah. a traditional porn star. Yeah. But um, Jamie used to, well, Jamie's into like a slow motion rough trade. Like it was like. That's specific. Like, you That's been, a good way to describe it. Have you ever been yeah. raped by a tree sloth? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, he, he would be doing this thing where he'd like kind of close his eyes and he'd like, oh, come here. He'd be pushing the chick's head like to her his groin. Sure. But it wasn't like he was smacking or slapping yeah. her. That's a very, right. very accurate so description it's, of it's a him. slow very motion. Accurate. Right. And so. I took note of that because uh, I have hypervigilance, you know. Right. And I, you noticed, I noticed that Jamie, <laughs> it's like it's working for Jamie. It's like, Jamie, it, it just it seemed weird to have a guy who was into rough trade, but a very slow, like an elderly rough trade, like he was kind of mumbling and his eyes closed all the time. And so I said, I think it was Ginger Lynn. Ginger Lynn came into Love Line. I said, uh, "This is one of my. This is not. This is not one of my favorite porn-related stories. One of my favorite all-timers. Mm -hmm, you know, transcends. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and and I said, uh, you work with Jamie Gillis, right? And she goes, uh, Yeah. And I go, seemed a little rude, a little rough, a little out of bounds, or something <laughs> from the way I saw it. You know, I was only watching a back then a twenty-one inch, you know, right. Sony, but." Uh, 
she was look it crossed the line a little bit and she was no no jamie's a sweetheart great guy perfect gentleman i said really she goes yeah <laughs> oh one time he tried dry anal rape on me <laughs> and I was like, wow. In a gentlemanly way. Yeah. He is very polite. He is very polite. He's yeah. very cordial and polite. Well, she worked on Ooh. Ginger. But, uh, she forgot about it. Yeah. Wow. There's the great Jamie Gillis and uh, Ginger Lynn, and I don't know who the other. Who's the other girl in the picture? I'm finding out. <laughs> well, we got Peter here. I can't. Come on. I, can't <laughs> I need some glasses right now. Um,. Were there, uh, did you look forward to like a Christy Canyon scene, oh, for absolutely. instance? Absolutely. Absolutely. I love Christy Canyon. Because she's hot, I she's mean, fun, and yeah, she's nice. Uh, yeah, she's, she's just, a, and I like, like, good sized naturals. Mm hmm. And so, thank I, you. Yeah. <laughs> but what, did you ever like it a little too much? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, we got to get through the scenes right. here. We got to go through you the could say that. I was, I was, compulsory. Uh, yeah, that I was focusing a little bit too much on the on the breast for a period of time. Was, you know how the they do it. They shoot it. We shoot about I don't know thirty forty minutes, and they they edit that down to anywhere from twenty to twenty four twenty five minutes. Mm. Uh, the other girl in the picture was Karen Summer. So okay, if her okay, kids yeah. are listening <laughs> <laughs> to mom with the great uh, Jamie Gillis. Uh, Dick Rambone, uh, you should know, retired in, uh, in 1987. I feel like he had a few, few more years left in him, but mm -hmm. right. yeah, going on top. So he appeared in something in like 92, but as just as Rambone. <laughs> Not Dick Rambone? No. You ever work with Dick Rambone? No. Really? No. I feel like you guys are in the same era. I, I, I did a movie with, um, I guess John Holmes was in it. Mm -hmm. But it was like one of his last movies. Mm -hmm. But I never ran across them because I my day of shooting was a different day. It was, I think the movie was called Dick Man and Throbbin. Mm -hmm. and, uh, oh, that's good. <laughs> that's gr and, okay. um He was there on a different day. And that it was a time when you were, it was illegal to shoot in L.A. You could sell all the movies you want in the Valley in L.A., but you, you, it was legal to shoot. So I guess the SWAT team raided the place after the day after I was there. I wasn't there for, I was on Two different sets that they got raided after I, I my day, so it was it was a little bit crazy. Jizz by the outlines on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> they traced them back. Well, speaking of that, uh, you know they have rules for airline pilots, like you know you can't fly twice in a twelve-hour period or something. Right. You have to sleep for eight hours. Hazardous. And, yeah. Do you have the same you know cock-related rules? Couldn't, could you do two scenes in a they, day? They, that was the thing. They, they were, um, if you were good enough, they'd always book you two scenes in a, in a day. And if you're doing five days in a row, it gets to the point. It started getting to the point where I was like, I could hit it against a rock and I wouldn't feel it. You mm -hmm. know, I said that's why the weekends off were, was was pretty good. But then I started working weekends and just it just fell upon whenever the schedule was. So, um, yeah, they don't. If like there's one a couple times I've done three scenes in a day, and that is is pretty tricky. But if you're with the right girl, it's you know you can you can pull it off. The the person that I always thought that was probably one of the best performers in the business, and to this day still think he is, is uh, TT Boy. Oh, TT Boy, sure. Yes, mm -hmm. he. I, I've, I've seen TT Boy. Hold on, looking him up. I've <laughs> seen him do four scenes in one day. And we call gate it when someone comes out of their pants hard. He gated it on the fourth scene. He wow. doesn't even like getting blowjobs. And, wow. and then he's like hard. Hold on. He doesn't like getting blowjobs? Yeah, not wow. that much. Wow, the, the honeymoon's over with yeah. TT boy. But, but he's like still, with, with, with his mind, he's just, yeah. Now, that's modern day TT boy. But olden days, did TT boy looked like he was half black or something? He's, he's or uh, Hawaiian or something? Puerto Rican. Puerto Rican. Ugh, and man. he's got that pot Puerto Rican blood. And actually, the uh, couple uh, professional um, boxing trainers said that he missed his calling. He could have been a champion. <laughs> could have fucked of... one of the greatest champions <laughs> of all time. <laughs> TT? No, that's still, I don't know. That, uh, maybe that is TT, boy. Follow-up question. Were you Batman or Throbbing? <laughs> or were I you the poker? I was. <laughs> uh, good one. I was neither. Come was on. Anyone. No. I just, you know, I like to keep my scenes simple, like, you know, the, the but if you're a main character, Brian, please. I had a, I had a, um, a script that was 50 pages long and a lot of, I was a doctor in this thing and a lot of it was Dr. Jargon. It was like, it wasn't just your layman's right. terms of, 
speaking and it's like okay but i had a knack for remembering my scripts so um and people would be still reading in the green room and i'm i, I take the script away from the, the actress and i said okay let me give you your line you you, you yeah, tell me back you answer me back and basically she she would get it after doing that a little bit oh, wow. she had to because if you're still reading before you go on on camera you're not going to get it right so that yeah did you or do you know of anyone who insured body parts is that a thing or is that just a I heard tale? I heard some guy from London um some white guy from London insured his 12 inch penis for a million or, or something like oh, that a wow. million dollars TT boy yeah. insured his nutsack <laughs> that guy was an unbelievable performer he's a, he's a hero I'm gonna need more TT boy pictures because I'm not pulling up the right ones apparently like TT boy I don't know from back in the day on the on the screen, oh, I thought he had an afro, but this that guy? may be confusing him. No, that, I don't that know. Doesn't I'm look out. Like TT boy to me, but not maybe. the TT boy you know. No, but on the other hand, you know it, it gets it gets blurry to get all your FM Bradleys and <laughs> Graham Bones and your John Holmes's eyes and all the TT boys and. Can you settle another urban legend that we all think exists? Okay. There's not really a fluffer, is there? There wasn't. No, that's... I didn't think that's, so. Yeah. I mean, what a job. I mean, before me, I don't know, but... But you're, but, you're, but I, you're look, expected I mean, to what, take what, care of that. What actress would accept some guy getting, you know, fluffed from another girl to be able to do something with her? Oh, that would be insulting. Mm. Like a, Very yeah. insulting. Yeah. Never yeah. thought I mean, about that. Damaging psychologically. Right. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, we'll see. Yes, we'll see if we can find a picture of T.T. Boy. For, that's the picture I saw. I, I don't know. I don't know if Peter can... Uh... Yeah, that, that's him. That was him. All right. Well, that was T.T. Boy. Well, Not was the T.T. Boy you remember. I was confusing him with uh, some some other great, some other uh, legend. <laughs> um, all right. You want to... Uh, let's see. Hold on a second here. Got a spot to do, and then you can uh, hang out and do some uh, news with us, uh, Peter North. Sure. Yeah. All right. Uh, let me tell you about uh, Hyundai Tucson. They question everything. It's great. The best Tucson ever. Every inch of the all-new Tucson has been completely reimagined, resulting in an SUV loaded with innovation inside and out. From design to technology to safety, every aspect of the new Tucson has been improved and completely redesigned. There's a, a digital key, which allows you to use your phone as your spare key. So uh, that's a nice piece of technology. Also... There's a 10 and a quarter inch uh, full touch infotainment screen, LED daytime running lights that are uh, stylishly hidden in the front grill. I've been uh, all over this uh, Tucson. I hung out in it for a while with uh, Mike. We marveled at the technology, but the styling's really nice as well. So uh, you can go to Hyundai.com and learn all you need to know about the new Hyundai Tucson. All right. We will take ourselves a. Uh, Quick wheel, we have Camp Spreading Eagle, which was uh, <clears throat> which was which was the bit. It was the man show bit. I haven't I've never even talked about this bit, have I? This does not sound familiar. I would remember yeah. this. So this is a uh, basically a uh, summer camp with porn stars. <laughs> summer camp with porn stars, that's right. Now, I heard the camera adds ten pounds. Uh-huh. How many of those go on the penis? <laughs> <laughs> Save it. All right, you bend your knees and stand West. on the balls yeah. of your feet the way Peter and Amber are doing. <laughs> nice job, guys. And remember to always keep at least one hand on your hip at all times. <laughs> hey, Kimmo, Corolla. You think this is funny? I want you to drop and give me 20 pelvic thrusts. <laughs> now! <laughs> Not my pelvis. <laughs> now, how long does it usually take before I become a coke fiend? A couple weeks. I'm sorry, just real quick. It's oral, oral, missionary, doggy, wheelbarrow, oral, anal, oral, money shot? Money shot. <laughs> oh, any of these dope versions? Because I don't want to hurt anybody. I remember this scene. Yeah, I'm taking you out. <laughs> I'm Jeremy. You're done. Hit the showers. Don't take me out, coach. I got plenty left. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> I did bless that scene, actually. Excuse me, Mr. North? I'm your biggest fan. Do you think you could sign my penis? 
Ah, oh, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should uh, just initial it. <laughs> <laughs> and hanging from the door was a bloody meat hook. Oh. Hey, I got one. It was a dark and stormy night, just like tonight. And I had to do this double penetration scene with these two Puerto Ricans. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Dear Mom, camp is fun. Very fun. The people are nice. Very nice. Can I please stay an extra week? Jimmy! Jimmy! Ron Jeremy's making s'mores. Oh, man, you gotta see this. I'll be right there. Love your son, Big Jim Bonewhacker. <laughs> That's good. That's good. That'd be so fun to shoot. It was work. Don't uh -huh. know Peter knows. <laughs> we hired Jimmy because it was prompt. Right. All right. Uh, wait, do we take, take a, a break? Quick break? Oh, we'll take a quick break. Come back to the news right after this. Give me the news with Grad. News with Gino Grad. Breaking viral. Weird crime protest politics. Give me news with Gino Grad. Stuff they saw on TMC. Joe Biden. The news with Gina Grad. Well, let's do some Olympic news since that is right around the corner. There was there was mumblings of this, but now it's official. There will be no spectators at the Tokyo Olympics later this month. Olympic officials made the announcement citing safety concerns uh, amid, I hate that word, amid an increase in the spread of COVID-19 variants across the country. Only 15% of the people have been vaccinated there. The announcement in also... Japan? Yeah. I, I actually heard a podcast about 16? how... 15. Oh my. 15%. Um, there was a couple of reasons they gave, and I don't know if it was... I could be I could be misremembered, like like a mistrust of the government, a mistrust of things moving too quickly and just cranking this stuff out, like culturally not into it, and oh. and not mm. not a lot of vaccinations available there. It just kind of they did so well that they didn't oh. really worry about it. That's interesting because here I think I heard a stat that uh, Asians were the highest vaccinated rate. It just goes down along. American, you're like, yeah, yeah, all all the same lines you right. hear about for median income and education. It was the exact same thing. It was like mm -hmm. Asians were number one, white people were number two, Hispanics were number mm -hmm. three, and black people were number four mm -hmm. in terms of our groups right. of getting vaccinated. Corolla is at number five. Right. I'm at five. <laughs> the announcement, but we had Asians at number one. Well, very under vaccinated. There follows Japan's prime minister declaring a state of emergency, which is now in effect through August 22nd. Imagine, you, at least I've never been there, but I've seen plenty of footage. You don't see a lot of real husky Japanese people out there. Mm. So I feel like if this thing's it's hitting... It's a civil culture. So, <laughs> well, not, not everybody on the street. They are, but then everyone, sure, everyone sure. else in the arena is pretty svelte. Yeah. And I, I, I imagine if it's hitting people that are heavy set, the thinner cultures are going to survive a little better. But well, there's been a lot of protests there by Japanese people saying, like, we don't want everyone coming here. Like, we're, we're trying oh. to get this under control. Mind, also, they're an island. You know, yeah. Australia right. did exactly. well. New Zealand did well. I feel bad for the sprinter, the American sprinter. We're going to talk about her right now. Oh, okay. Shikari Richardson. Uh, TMZ reports that she, her Olympic dreams are officially crushed because we knew she was out of one event, but now she's out of both events. This is following her failed drug test. The U.S. track and field officials left the fastest woman in America off the 4 by 100 meter squad. Um, and as you said, this happened despite the fact that the 30-day suspension will end before the relay race. She's 21, by the oh, way. Well, she'll she, be back. Oh, yeah. She tested, and I have a clip of her you're going to like, uh, tested positive for marijuana after the Olympic trials last month, accepted the one-month ban. Um, the story is that she found out her biological mother died. She knew the rules, but she needed to take the edge off. She tweeted right after that, I am human. Uh, I felt it sad that we had to put biological in front of mother. Like yeah. she found out. Right. Well, I there, don't know what her situation well, is, is, but it's now sad that people have to find yeah. out they're biological. Yeah. They have to do this like, I met my biological dad when right. I was in the fourth grade or whatever that There's sad. Footage of her winning and then running up to the stands to hug her grandma. 
Mm, so I'm biological. Assuming, I'm assuming she might have. Shouldn't raised people her. just be able to smoke pot? these days no they should not not according to the uh well biden it, when they caught him off guard and asked him said that that may change but <laughs> she did flunk and mm-hmm. when asked about how she feels about this i i thought of you because boy did she not point fingers this oh, was her, i love it yeah this was i love a little in i'm tired of all the externalization like yeah. this i got fucked and this is bullshit oh, no. and this is racist this is the opposite this I was know. her response on the today show um just honestly boy Ooh. just i want to take responsibility mm-hmm. for my actions i know what i did i know what i'm supposed to do um no i'm not i'm i'm allowed not to do and i still made that decision but um not making an excuse or looking for any empathy in my case, but just however, being in that position of my life, finding out something like that, something that I would say is probably one of the biggest things that have impacted me positively and negatively in my life when it comes to dealing with the relationship I have with my mother. So Smoke that detector, definitely was a very heavy topic on me and people don't yeah, understand it what it's like to have to People do. We all have our different struggles. We all have our different things we deal with. But to put on a face, to have to go in front of the world and put on a face and hide my pain. Um, like, who? I don't know. Who are you? Or who am I to tell you how to cope? I mean, and I should have I should have given you a trigger warning. I did forget there was a smoke detector in there. How can you run in those eyelashes? That was the that was the big thing after we saw her run. Like we need to get her a lash glue sponsor because amazing. Yeah, uh, now that pot's ubiquitous and yeah. sort of decriminalized and legal everywhere, just pull it off. I'm not comparing human beings to horses, but. Didn't we find out that, you know, like if people smoke pot and and I'm actually kind of uh, paraphrasing something that Mo Kelly on KFI said, um, if if people smoke pot for cancer or for whatever, for pain relief and remember that that's outlawed with horses because they could, you know, hurt themselves. You're pushing them harder than they should go Mm -hmm. because they don't know they're hurt. Isn't it kind of the same thing? Yeah, I, it's just... I, I don't know. I'm trying to figure I, out... Hey, look, it's either an advantage or it isn't an advantage. Well, and if it's not an advantage, then you can do it. You can yeah. drink alcohol. That's not an advantage. Right. But if you want to cope with the death of your biological anything, then you can drink. I absolutely agree. But it was so interesting to hear anyone have some sort of a counter <laughs> argument. Well, it's 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 old. It's an old school thing that you don't hear anymore, which is I am sure they tell everyone do not smoke pot. You have to drug test. Right. And that's still on the list of banned substances. So, you know, the rules. She knew the rules. Yeah. And in a very rare instance of internalization, just said, I knew the rules and I shouldn't have done it. And she even caught herself halfway through and said, like, something like, you know, how would you, f- you know what? I don't know how you feel. Everyone's different. I mean, just a class act. Yeah. So she'll be back. Uh, an autographed Steph Curry rookie card sold for big bucks, setting a record for highest price paid for a trading card. It's been graded mint A on a mint scale of a? 1 to 10. You uh, 8, blo- sorry. Peter, you want to blow up the internet? <laughs> <laughs> I get that card. I pay 725000 thousand bucks for it we lay it down and you desecrate it <laughs> we, we could bring sell it that for mint we would blow up the internet <laughs> that's right <laughs> yeah. S- sell that nft it'd be viral for sure that's yeah. viral load mm-hmm. uh and uh the autograph i don't know how they do this so the card is mint a the autograph on the card is gem mint 10 oh the even most, better yeah uh the highest grade possible now i'll give you Actually, I won't. I won't. Uh, there was the second previous highest recorded car was LeBron James earlier this year. How much do you think this one yeah, went take for? Take that, LeBron. Mm, I don't know. Well, I'm good. just thinking of a whole series of Peter North beats off on. Oh. You know what I mean? That's good. We we'll go with the Quran at some point, no, and then you no, and I have no, to, no, no, We please. have to go into no, exile to go for the rest of our lives. You know what I mean? We, there's a whole <laughs> bunch bad, of stuff. That's a terrible idea. Oh. Well, I'm just saying it, it, things are. You know, I'm a, I'm a creative type. Was it you know? sweeps things, week? Yeah, coming to my yeah. We do that during sweeps. Jesus. It'd be it. We could blow up the internet. Yeah, that would be a big thing. Hmm. Hmm. Mm. I'm, I'm thinking the stuff. Oh. Didn't you do? <laughs> didn't you do a story about Mike Trout's card going for like a million dollars? I think a year so. Ago? I'll say I'll, I'll go with Adam's guess and say seven hundred twenty-five thousand. Okay, 
Mike Trout, not a bad porn name. Mm. Yeah, that's true. Are Trout big? Well, bigger than my dick. That's true. <laughs> We'd have to th- throw mine back. <laughs> Yours is more bait. <laughs> Adam Guppy. <laughs> <laughs> Anchovy. Um, I'm just going to go uh, 1.3 million bucks. Okay, Peter? <clears throat> well, I'll guess. I'm right there around one, two. Well, you guys think this is a fire sale day at the auction house. It went for five point nine wow. million dollars. Oh, wow! And LeBron's card went for five point two, which was the most ever. And now he's Damn. been beat. So there's something going on with like the memorabilia. Like, oh yeah! Is it, it's the economy. Is it just? What? Is it everything is digital now? We We're want through the looking casual. glass. This is like a real life NFT. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? Before we right. even needed an NFT or knew what that was. Oh, this is the price of nostalgia? I mean, the guy is still playing in the league. I mean, it's it's crazy. I have an autographed uh, Clay Thompson jersey in my house. I, I, mm. I'm not saying it's $5.3 million, but well, bring uh, it over. I want Peter to no, come take on. a look at it. No, just part of the show. You can <laughs> write it off. Yeah. <laughs> you can write it off. It's like a loss of taxes. <laughs> Uh, Lil Nas X, are you familiar? I'm sure Natalia likes him. Sure. Yeah. Uh, he triggered some online criticism for kissing a male dancer during his performance of Montero, Call Me By Your Name, at the BET Awards at the end of June. Oh, is he the gay cowboy? Correct. But according to TMZ, with all the online criticism, only three were actually directed to the FCC. For comparison, Cardi B and Megan The Stallion's Grammy performance of WAP and J Lo and Shakira's Super Bowl halftime show uh, inspired more than a thousand FCC complaints. And if you missed it, because you're not always watching uh, the BET Awards, I think this mm-hmm. is this is whatever some people were up in arms about, but nobody told the FCC. So it was a dude kissing a dude. Yeah, it's Lil Nas X kissing one of his backup dancers. At, mm. at the big, it's the big finale. I'm oh, sorry, is Lil Nas X gay? Yes, Brian. Well, I don't know. I how, don't know. I don't know. How much, uh, what kind of kissing? Uh, I would love to show you. Passionate. I would say passionate. Mm-hmm. I would say it. Wait a minute. Jennifer. There's gay backup dancers now? <laughs> come on, Gina. You've come a long way, baby. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It, it has that Egyptian Michael Jackson, like, remember the time? Like, everyone's in Egyptian mm-hmm. stuff. And I, maybe we're not saying Oh, that, but the one with the Magic Johnson? Yeah, it has that vibe. Um, but at the end, he plants a solid kiss. And uh, My favorite I, part, of, is that the Magic Johnson video? Yeah, where yes. he and up? Iman. Because I loved it, because Mag- Magic Johnson came up and went, Behold! <laughs> I think he, yeah. I think he finished off. He, the just, coach. he just said ho. Okay. Well, I guess they don't have it. I'm not sure what's going on. Should we move on? Mm-hmm. Yeah? Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. I, I, am, be- I believe you. <laughs> I believe you. I'm so glad you weren't claimed by this situation in Alaska, mm-hmm. Adam, mm-hmm. and Chris and Dawson. Glad this didn't happen to you. A grizzly bear has pulled a woman from her tent in the middle of the night in Montana and killed her according Mm. to wildlife officials. Fox News reports that the victim, 65-year-old Leah Davis, Loken of Chico, California, she was on a long-distance bike trip, and she was attacked. She was killed around 3.30 in the morning before fellow campers in a tent near her were able to use bear spray to ward off the 400-pound animal. Bear has not been located, still at large. Uh, And here's the thing. Grizzly bears have run into increasing conflict with humans in the northern Rockies because they're protected. And they can't be hunted. So they're getting kind of brave and they're multiplying. But I think they'll kill that bear. Oh, that one, yes, they will kill. But in general, um, this has spurred calls to elected officials in Montana and Wyoming and Idaho trying to lift this protection so that Uh, they can call the population. Yeah. It's got to be. If you're that bear, I mean, I wonder if the other bears catch on. Mm. You don't want (laughs) to hang out with that bear. You know what I mean? Like right. if that bear's like, well, I just ate this old lady out of her tent. But you want to go down the stream and no. catch some salmon? Like, yeah, go on ahead. <laughs> go on ahead because somebody has to kill that bear. But how do you find, how do you dis- dis- discern which one? I which? don't I don't know, but I just got back from Alaska and they were like, well, these, they're hunters. And we were at a guy's house who was like, yeah, if you got a bad bear, like you got a bear that keeps showing up and getting into people's stuff, they they got to go kill that bear. And they just hire this dude and he, either he knows which bear it is or he just kills a bear and right. goes, yeah, yeah, we got <laughs> <He's> it. <good. laughs> we're good. 
<laughs> Thinking about the Michael Jackson video, Peter. Did you ever do any exotic uh, themes, like you know, Egyptian or Old West, or you know, some, some weird production? Is like, right. Dress it, up in a costume in, in, in a movie? Yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. What was done... the weirdest? What were some of the weirdest? Well, um, I know the most difficult one was uh, being underwater with a regulator and having sex. That sounds what? very dangerous. Like. It's a control. It was a controlled environment. It basically was in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and okay. it was like it about was. ten, uh, ten foot deep uh, oh, uh, container. And there were two girls that were on a plank up above, and I had a regulator, so they would come down. I was amazed at how well they held their breath. I was like blown away. But uh, that was probably the most interesting and most difficult because I, I was moving around too much underwater. The, they didn't weigh me down enough. Right. So I had to put my feet under this chain that went across the bottom to hold myself in place. Wow. And, yeah, it was just, it, it worked. We did it. Wow. Yeah. Those girls probably got mega UTIs. Because one would go up, <laughs> one would go up to the board, and another one would come right back down. Wow. It was, it was. It was a goddamn It was a different, yeah, the, yeah. I guess this is what this company does. They do it in swimming pools and, and stuff like that. But that's why controlled. we all know their name. Yeah. I wonder if that's what our snooba equipment really was used for when we went snooba in oh, Cozumel. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's perfect. Uh, we got to. Well, I'll get into it tomorrow, but I had a threesome conversation with uh, Mike Lynch oh, yesterday. Boy. Once we got to get a staff poll on it, but we're running late today. But we'll we'll get into it uh, tomorrow. Oh, good. Mm-hmm. Um. So just so we can all, say, I mean, Peter, you very open minded. You've done a lot of things. You're professional. Um. There is a real doll out there for everybody, and if you have an older man fetish. You want to going to want to direct them toward the real doll company. They are now making realistic, elderly male sex robots, uh, complete oh. with wrinkles and gray hair and <laughs> other signs of aging. Just whatever you think that collapsed me back. <laughs> long balls. I don't know. It's being constructed specifically for a client who requested it, but they're willing to do more. But I. I... But the whole thing about the sugar daddy mm-hmm. is you have to put up with the gray right, pubes right. and the male yeah. pattern the baldness right. and the gun in order to get the car. <laughs> That's right. But if if the real doll costs you money, yeah. you know what I mean? But where, it's a fetish. It's like going to work and not getting paid. Right. <laughs> yeah. I, but some yeah. some people might be into this. Might be their thing. It's it's got to be for dudes though. This is no there's no female that's in. To the male, I don't, this is a male real doll, right? Yeah, this is like a grandpa. Yeah, that's for a dude. Everything that can't be explained is for gay. That's how you <laughs> it's know. For like, gay? Who's, for gay. Okay. For gay. So you go, who's going to, what woman would, what woman would pay to have sex with a... The answer is no woman. No woman. Well, I can't yeah. imagine a real doll being requested by a woman because women are, women are pretty, it's pretty easy. If you want to have sex, you go have sex. Right. So you Private. might be onto something. You're right. Understood. Thank right. you. Um, so, uh, no, not sure how much this is, but regular real dolls go for twelve grand. Oh, That's I know an a investment. guy. I know. You a got guy. a real doll guy. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I know a guy. Um, yeah, I, I thought we had a picture of him, but we might not. But uh, yeah, he is. He is realistic. My feeling with the real doll is, I, yeah. where do you stash it? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You can put a vibrator and a shoebox up <laughs> in the closet. You know, you can take your porn DVDs and stash them in your magazine sure. or whatever and under the bed or between the... Where do you stash a real doll? Do you go the other way and you don't stash it? You go like a lawn jockey? They just you know, get like, park you it lean out. in. That's what I'm saying. Like, like fine, I'm not going to hide this. This is who I am. Well... There's your guy, by we're the way. Look, we're looking at the guy. Trail. Yes. God. Who's the guy that does the TD Ameritrade? He looks like that actor. <laughs> Sam Watterson. Sam, Sam Watterson. Watterson. Oh, he looks exactly no. like Sam Watterson. Mm. Peter, you ever have a uh, mold of your dick made? Yeah. That was a quick yeah. <laughs> of course. Actually, Chasey Lane was the first uh, person to have that done. Mm-hmm. And then um, Jenna, Jameson, and myself did kind of around the same time for this mm-hmm. one company. And it's, 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 it's way too difficult. I mean, because like you say, um, there's no. I don't think there was Viagra around at the time. Well, maybe Viagra, but I I didn't take any. But Cialis or anything like that, or even having a girl on the phone talk dirty to me or something like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just something. Yeah, how do you keep it? Because that way? you get an edge, and you're in a room with like um, these uh, Latina women with um, lab lab coats, <laughs> right. white lab mm-hmm. coats, and it's so like 
sterilized production yeah yeah, like a medical uh, situation and so they have a tube with a rubber uh, at the base of it and it's about a 12 inch tube and and it's i don't know what the girth of it it's a pretty big girth that they pour once they they put it on you once you're ready to go they pour they put it on to and you got to wait like five minutes to solidify to get the accuracy of the veins Mm. and this and that there's no way there's five minutes I, i i had to do it like i don't know how many retakes we had to do on that but i, I heard the same thing from rocco sofredi that they it had to do it a number of times wow and it didn't come out it, it came out somewhat accurate but the size didn't come out but whatever. who's gonna know yeah How is, it, is it a big seller i think the one that squirted was a big seller <laughs> you, put, you could put pina colada in in the balls or, and, and stuff like that or and then just squeeze, squeeze them and if you're it, on the yeah. kids over for the four <laughs> pina colada in the balls. <laughs> oh my god and uh but did you ever feel like I'm not a superstitious man? But do you ever feel like at night you're asleep and maybe some guy's got a hold of your replica cock and he's doing something insane with it, you know? And all of a sudden you just feel a little, Voodoo. You know, a little yeah, like a little. He's putting a pin in it or putting up his boyfriend's <laughs> ass or something, and you just you just wake up a little, like you feel a little something down there. Never crossed my mind. Never, never thought. Mm. You know, but think you about get a, it. you get a piece of the sales. You want <laughs> yeah, that happening? Yeah, we we did. I, I know. I think everybody did a kind of a buyout. A little later on, not too, because I didn't trust the the company that much. And, you know, so what? You don't <laughs> trust the company that makes replica cocks from <laughs> coked out porn stars? No, oh, Ch- well, Ch- Ch- Chasey Lane did it the wrong way. Yeah. I mean, she just wanted people to sign up to her her, her site and stuff like that. She she could have she could have made like over a million, yeah, a million dollars on hers. And they told and the guy told me that, and I'm like thinking, okay. As, as much as you complain about the way they pull the mold on the male porn star the female yeah. porn star is no picnic I either but the yeah. Yeah. Of I think they do I think they do the, the, the ass and, and the oh wow oh, yeah. so do they just you just basically rig. sit in it until it I get yeah, yeah from what I'm seeing that's what it looks back. like oh. yeah I don't know Chasey Lane was pretty hot you guys remember oh, Chasey Lane Chasey Lane no. you ever work with Chasey Lane yeah she was good right yeah. I mean I look at it like Ginger Lynn and and Christy Canyon and Tracy Lords were the 80s mm-hmm. that stood out. Then you got uh, Jenna Jameson, Tara Patrick, mm-hmm. Chasey Lane, and maybe some of the Vivid Girls, Janine Lindemeyer or something like that for the 90s. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Janine Lindemeyer was the one who was married to... Jesse James. Oh, Jesse James. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. In the uh, Blink-182 video, she's on the cover of the album. With I the, think with she's the, the mother of his child. <clears throat> oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jesse James. What about Frank James? <laughs> Any relation? <laughs> did Jesse James in real life had a? I mean, not Jesse James the outlaw. Did it was his brother Frank? I think it was. It's kind of a weird low what self esteem move. Remember you know. Sandra Bullock was with him. <clears throat> yes. Oh, that's right. That yeah. Yeah. That was that was, that was sad. That was a sad situation. <clears throat> yeah, but amusing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, Chasey Lane was hot. Yeah. That's what I... Uh, she, yeah, big blue eyes, brunette. Yeah, she was definitely hot. Yeah. She was uh, good looking to find Chasey Lane. You know, the uh, uh, we were talking about the love boat much earlier in the show, and the, mm-hmm. the PTA woman mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. looked a little Ginger Lynn. Yeah, had some Ginger Lynn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. But, uh, yeah, Chasey Lane. Um, oh, yeah, there's oh, Chasey wow. Lane. Oh, my. Oh, my. Good looking lady. Is this Ginger Lynn? Because this is what came up. Uh, that's Ginger Lynn as of last Wednesday. I see. <laughs> that wasn't the Ginger Lynn. She's an all American, all American blonde girl from you know. Oh, okay, this Ginger Lynn. That Ginger okay. Lynn. Okay. Yes. yes. Yeah. I see. Yes. Good for her. Good for her. All right. Shall we bring it home, Gina Grad? Let's do it. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. God, I'm not really into anal, I guess. Gina, Gina. <laughs> That was the news with Gina Grad. All right. Last but not least, we got 15 seconds for Hyundai Tucson. They've all, every inch has been reimagined, completely redesigned. New Tucson is SUV loaded with innovations inside and out. And uh, it is a really nice SUV. I've spent a lot of time around this truck. You can go to Hyundai.com. That's Hyundai.com. All right. I'm going to be in Raleigh, North Carolina. We got uh, Ginger in the uh, PTA head from uh, Love Boat. It's a good look. 
I'm going to be Raleigh, and that's going to be coming up July 16th, 17th. Good Nights Comedy Club in Minneapolis and Royal Oak, Michigan, Kansas City. Just go to AdamCarolla.com. You can see Dawson and Chris's band this Saturday, 7 p.m., South Bay Customs in El Segundo. Oh, I love that place. Yeah, it's very cool. So enjoy that. Uh, Peter, I don't know what we're plugging here. The tweet, shoot him a tweet at the Peter North and uh, say hi. And uh, Chassis, by the way, on Pluto TV, you got a bunch of new shows there for free on Channel 687. So until next time, it's Adam Kroll for Peter North and Gina Grant and Paul Bryan. Say it. Mahalo. Dick Man and Throbbing.